Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of brilliant idiotness. Bang, bang, Hezekiah Walker. What's, what's happening? What's up? What's up, everybody? Man, such an unprecedented... I don't even know if this is unprecedented anymore. Shit is just normal now. Yeah, it, it is weird how desensitized we are to everything. It's just normal. I, I said this morning, right? I walked into the Breakfast Club studios and like a lot of the, the, the newspapers from like the last week have been in there, right? So it's like one cover, Donald Trump assassination attempt. Another cover, Biden steps out. Another cover, Kamala got the Democratic nominee. And I was like, he, why he, are we not saving any of these? He, honestly... I was upset that I, I mean, I've, I was really happy that I got to take a little vacation, but mm -hmm. each thing that happened on the vacation, uh, how do I word this? It was the worst time to take a vacation. Yes. You should have been. Yeah. Every absolutely, day, absolutely. another global cataclysm absolutely. happens. Absolutely. But it's better, though, because when you come back, you get to talk about oh, it all. Now we get to because, talk about it because all. Because the reality is it's all like a, it's a, it's a series, right? Like, it's yes. not like, it's not like you, you don't want to just talk about one episode. That was just episode one, two, three. Yes. Yeah. We got a whole arc that's yes, going. Yes, 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 yes. So I heard you were holding down MAGA on the pod. <laughs> Did I hold down MAGA? You were holding down MAGA. That's what I heard. What did I do last week on the pod? I don't know. They was telling me, they were like, yo, Charlamagne's holding down MAGA. Yo, do you know that they put me, they had me in the, they mentioned me in the Secret Service fucking Senate hearing, yo? No. Taylor, play this shit. As what? I don't know what the fuck this means. Listen, yo. <laughs> Today. And I also would say, I've got a bunch of uh, UC requests, if I can go ahead, Mr. Chairman. P proceed with the request. Thank you. I, I apologize. It might uh, take, that's right. Go ahead. It might take a moment. Very important. I, uh, Who's this so, guy? Uh, Andy Biggs of Arizona. Anthony Guglielmi, the Secret Service spokesman. One from him. Without objection, so ordered. Article, U.S. Secret Service says it previously denied Trump requests for additional resources. New York Times reports. Without objection, so ordered. Secret Service says it denied earlier Trump requests for more federal resources. Without objection, so ordered. Secret Service acknowledges denying some past requests by Trump's campaign for tighter security. Without objection, so ordered. A preliminary findings by Senator Ron Johnson and his committee. Without objection, so ordered. <clears throat> Articles entitled, Notice Anything Different About Trump's Secret Service Detailed. Uh, next, former Biden official corrects herself after saying Dems must turn their fire on Donald Trump to beat him. Secret uh, Service director says Buck stops with her, but she will not resign. Disney Star Wars Mark Hamill cracks joke about Trump's ear bandage following assassination attempt. Biden, I haven't engaged in inciting rhetoric Trump has. I'm just talking about threat to democracy. Uh, piece called, Who is Secret Service Chief Kimberly Cheadle? Charlemagne the God says Trump's solely responsible for violent rhetoric that led to attempt on his life. Video, I call Whoa. upon you to resign today. <laughs> yeah. Today. The fuck does that even that doesn't sound very mad. I've got a bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound very mad. Yo. Charlemagne just to use. Charlemagne just to use uh, the, the. Well, what were you wearing? Well. You used the what were you wearing <laughs> argument. What, that, well, guess what? What's that? Victim blaming. <laughs> you were victim blaming. Victim blaming. <laughs> Damn, Taylor, shit. Yo, what that? <laughs> the fuck? Why? But why? Oh, but why is he saying hey, that? Hey, the crazy part is when that happened on Monday. Yeah. I was just getting texts right from different congressmen and congresswomen, no, and they bro. were like, "Yo, Andy Biggs just mentioned you in the hearing." That's why you told me to get security. But you know what's funny? I go, "What did he say?" And they was like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand what <laughs> was happening. He said it was Trump's fault. Yeah. I understand what Charlemagne said. I don't understand what Biggs' whole point He's just was. reading. He don't know what he's reading okay. either. <laughs> but it's anchor man. It right? showed me that the Congress people don't even be listening for real. They don't listen to nothing. <laughs> None of them listen to anything. And by the way, it was Republican and Democrat Congress people texting my phone like, yo, he just mentioned you in here. And so I, go, I literally said to them, well, what did he say? They was like, I don't know. This is this is this is their work persona. You know when you go to work, how like most people when they have a regular job, you have to have a work persona. You're a little bit more professional, whatever. It's a character they all play. They not like this in real life. Uh, uh they are. Nah, bro. They, this they, is the they, exaggerated they are, they version. Are, they, they are, don't but care. it's work. It's work. Yeah, I get what you're saying. They don't care. None of them care. It's a game. They're all playing it. It's I've just been, fun. Yeah, I, I get you, because I've been to dinner. I've been to dinner with Republican Congress people. And Democrat Congress people at the same dinner, yeah. especially in South Carolina. You know what I mean? I'm from home in South Carolina. This just happened there like was a month a, ago. There's like, a bar they all used to hang out with in DC. That's right. Go ahead. There's a bar they always used to hang out in D.C. I forget the exact name of it, but mm -hmm. it was, they would just all go there. They'd all hang out. They would talk their shit. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Chris has to walk out in like ten minutes. I want to. Yo, Chris, why you're here? That meeting. What What is the meeting for? <laughs> uh, I'd rather not say, but. Uh, <laughs> 
I think this is a conversation that's going to keep going for a while. No, of course it's going to keep going for a while, but I need to know what the meeting is about. Lyme disease. That's Lyme disease. It, is it a doctor appointment? Yes. Oh, no way. Maybe. Oh. What do yeah. you think? What, 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 what have been your thoughts, Chris? Is the elder statesman in the room? Yo, uh, just say that you're on Team MAGA, Chris, and stop playing around. Charlamagne, you need to stop with your security. Charlamagne said I need to get security immediately. Yeah, why does he need security? Why do I need security? I forgot why I even told Andrew that. It was something Andrew said. I was, I was like, damn, man, my guy got to get secure. What did you say? What made me say he that? He scared the shit out of me. It wasn't even <laughs> no, what I said. I'm trying to I wasn't think. saying nothing. I was no, on you vacation. Did, you said something that made me I think I didn't say that. shit. All I got is a text from me like, oh, yo, no, no, it's no, no, about no. to go no. down. You need to get your family security. I'm in the Hamptons on the grass <laughs> playing with my kids. Like, yo, are they coming? What the fuck you mean I need no, security? It was based off, it was, af it was after the assassination attempt with Trump. Because what I said, and the same thing that Andy Biggs just quoted, is Donald Trump has created an environment of political violence that's not even safe. It's not safe for anybody. He created but especially it? him. Or the guy that shot him created it. But why did the guy shoot at him? Because they've been saying he's literally Hitler for the last eight years. But who's they? The the days, the trans, Me. the LGBTQ, the gay people, the, the, his the Democrats. His fucking running mate said that. The Democrats. His running his mate. His running mate is gay. Exactly the J. point. J.D. Vance? That, no, the, the last guy. That's what J.D. stands for, just dick. Just dick. <laughs> <laughs> just wow. dick. Now, that's what you need to drop on. You drop your nuts on that, J.D. No, I don't know nothing about J.D. Vance. I, I'll be honest. I don't, know <laughs> I don't know jack shit about him. I know nothing. I know that his wife is Indian. And uh, that's a brave white man right there because Indians will put you through it, man. Indian women do not play around. If he can handle an Indian woman, really? he can handle vice presidency. Guaranteed. Really? Absolutely. Wow. Look what uh, Kamala did to Joe Biden. Damn near killed him. <laughs> 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 and she just half Indian. She's not even full Indian. My man can't even talk no more. His memory's gone. He can't say numbers more than three digits. Hilarious. That woman destroyed him. She destroyed him. Mad <laughs> out! You gotta do what you gotta do for career advancement, Yo, baby. she she did. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, she's been known to do that throughout her <laughs> throughout her life. You know Listen, what I mean? All I'm saying is, you know, shout out to Willie's Brown. Uh, I, you, you know, I, I, I keep hearing I keep hearing that, and you've always heard that. But it's like, who? It's actually it? unfair rhetoric because. They, they're like, he was married, but like they were separated. I looked into it a little bit. Bro, Trump got like five baby mamas. No, no, Willie Brown is fire for doing it. No, but I'm saying Trump got like five baby Kamala's mamas. Kamala's not cool for doing he it, just but got, Willie he, Brown is he the just man. Pay, he just paid a goddamn porn star. Yeah. My whole thing is... He, Nobody gives a fuck. All that stuff. No one cares. Yeah, nobody God, cares. Stop that, caring. Yeah, nobody I see cares. Caring Absolutely. So much. Nobody stop gives caring. a fuck. Mag nobody up. gives a fuck. That, that is a, that is another thing Donald Mag Trump has done. Donald Trump has made it to where nothing Yo. matters. Stop blaming Trump. It's all of them. It's that's like, not a blame. That's props. Whatever. My point is like, it's both sides to the exact no, same it's not. shit. Charlemagne, 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 Charlemagne. Please, please, no, it's please, not. Please, 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 please. Not, not when it comes to political Charlemagne, 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 rhetoric Charlemagne, that caused political Charlemagne, violence. Just say it with me. MAGA. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Listen, but for real, for real, for real. When it comes to Both rhetoric, sides do this. No, they don't. Son, no, the, don't. the Democrats have been calling uh, 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 Trump to end democracy for the last eight years. They literally just slipped. Not just Democrats. Nikki Haley. Yes. J.D. Vance. Any Republican who was against bro, Trump bro, bro. before he became president bro, said they, the same thing. Exactly. They all say whatever they need to say to get attention. That's that's my point. My point is what the De Democrats did by placing Kamala as the nominee without any vote, you could argue is usurping democracy. She didn't get votes, though. She don't even fuck voted for her. What do you mean? Anytime that there's a vote for Biden, it's a vote for Harris. It's literally written now. You're going to make me it's say it. It's the fact. You're going to make me say it again. It's the fact. MAGA! <laughs> it's the same thing with the money. People like, like right now, uh, Donald Trump just filed for the FCC saying Sorry. that she shouldn't get the money. Literally, it Sorry. says the campaign money is for Biden When I Harris voted for Barack campaign. Obama, I wasn't voting for Joe Biden. You were, though. Without Look, knowing. See, see, this is why we all are trapped with social media. This is why social media owns our kids and we don't know it. Because we don't look at the fine print. Pop, 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 pop. When, when we sign up to Facebook, Instagram, all these places, we don't look at the fine print. I don't look print. at the fine print. Exactly. I don't look at it. <laughs> you voted for Joe Biden. No, but here's the thing. Biden hasn't stepped down. If Biden stepped down and then she became president, then I voted for her. I did not vote for her to be the next nominee just because I voted for Joe Biden. You so Biden vote, has you to... You didn't vote for Biden either. Say again? You didn't vote for Biden either. I didn't? No, it's for him to run again. 
he just I wasn't he, he just wasn't challenged. I said that in twenty. No, no, but I didn't vote for him in the primary. But usually the incumbent doesn't need to go into a primary because it's like, okay, we already like this guy. We need to keep going. But in not this, in this case. In this, in this case, we've been telling him sit the fuck down. down. But don't you don't listen. Can, no. we, can we give him? I know this is an yeah, unpo shit. It's an talk unpopular shit. opinion, but give Biden <laughs> his respect. He could have. I know all the cards were stacked against him. I know all the donors pulled out. I know the public opinion. He could have written it out. He could have let his ego. Oh, he couldn't have. It yeah. would have looked better if he pulled out before the donors told him we're not giving Charlemagne, you more money. But he couldn't because then. Kamala would actually have to do a primary and then nobody would vote for her. Well, they should have did a primary last year when everybody was calling for them to do a primary. We're at, like, all of this stuff that people are calling for now is not new. They were oh, calling to do a primary last what, year. I think what you guys are describing right now is the Democratic Party usurping democracy and not allowing the people you... to have a representation of their vote. Now, I'm not saying that Republicans don't also usurp democracy right. as well. I, I, this is not a comparison. Is this thing. like a Bernie thing? What is, explain that. Explain that. What do you mean? In oh, that, because I, I did feel that way with the super delegates. People felt that the Democratic Party they did that to him. Did it with the, or orchestrated it so they that did. that's a fact with right. the super delegates. One hundred. I don't think this is quite the same the thing. The fact I, that in America there is a there is a person and not just one, multiple people that their vote counts for ten thousand votes is insanity. Right, but I think it would. It's not usurp. It's not totally usurping democracy because people still have the opportunity not to vote for her. That is they, true. They might not have a candidate that, that they want to vote. That is true, but one person shouldn't get 10,000 votes. That's just, it just shouldn't be that. But whatever. Again, I don't want to get into the comparing thing. What I'm just trying to say is, why are we acting like one is more holier than the other? They're all shit. No, no, I, I don't think we are. MAGA. No, I don't think we are. I think, I think, I think we're all... I'll be right back. Oh, right. no, Chris! I think, I think we're all at the point where we know the purity test for politics and politicians is done. Yeah. It's done. The, the, the act like any of them stand on any moral high ground is ridiculous. That's the refreshing thing about Trump. I just said that five minutes ago. That you was told me fire. stop blaming No, I was fire when you said that. That was fire when you said that shit, bro. <laughs> Yo, when you said that shit, that was fire. That's what I don't I'm know saying. who J.D. Vance is. Explain to me who J.D. Vance. I know he went to Yale. I know he was at Yale with Vivek. I know. I know I, I'm gonna tell you something. I know Vivek put him onto the brown. I know JD Vance <laughs> because he used to. He was going against my guy Tim Ryan in Ohio. But man, what I, I thought JD Vance was the guy wearing the eye patch that Pete had insulted on SNL. No. When I saw him, I was like, Why you not wearing the eye patch no that's more? That's not fucking that slick Rick. <laughs> that's not JD Vance. That's Lottie Dottie Republican Party. We don't cause no trouble. We just shoot at everybody. Oh, oh, I got bars. Oh, <laughs> what you gonna do when the mega mania comes for you? Let me tell you something about that. We talked about that. Let's talk about that. Me and Andrew talked about that oh, oh, just right. through the text, right? We all know Hulk Hogan said racist rhetoric. What? We can agree on that. Yeah. What did he right? say exactly? He did, did, did something about niggas running wild and taking their vitamins or some shit, right? No, he's mad at his. He was mad that his daughter was messing with a black guy. She was getting, getting dicked down by the junkyard dog. She was just, hum, hum, hum. <laughs> She was getting a pod. She was getting a pod. Okay. You know, what, were, what were them brothers that used to walk in the day? Like, uh, was the, Bush, uh, the, Bush, the, the Bush brothers? Yeah, some The Bush, Bush brothers. Rat. They wasn't black, though. They was, um, they was I don't know what, the, Australian. But I watched Hulk Hogan at, that, uh, at the RNC, and everybody was, you know, upset about it. And I was like... Hulk Hogan did exactly what Hulk Hogan was supposed to do. It's just all about nostalgia mm. because people will forget what you did. They'll forget what you said, mm. but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Mm. I didn't know what the fuck Hogan was talking about. As soon as he started going, what are you going to do? Yeah. My mind didn't even hear it. My <laughs> mind just finished the sentence with Hulkamania runs wild on you. So you might have been in the crowd going, I didn't even realize he's saying, fuck Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? Fuck all you immigrants. What was he saying? Let's hear it. Let's, I don't even know what he said. So to this day, I don't know what he said. Let's hear it, Taylor. Uh, okay. Taylor will unplay to hit you. Oh my gosh. This is a this is a parody. Yeah, no. don't do the parody. Do no, the give actual. Give me the real joint, because I really don't know what Hulk Hogan said. I just know when he started taking when off his shirt, I heard what I have always heard throughout the 80s and 90s. Ready? Yes. But what happened last week when they took a shot at my hero. 
and they tried to kill the next president of the United States. Enough was enough. And I said, let trump -mania run wild, brother. Let trump -mania rule again. Let trump -mania make America great again. Watch this. This is really interesting. It's the only time I've ever seen Trump smile and laugh. That's the only time I've ever but seen Trump happened? laugh genuinely. You know why? 80s, 90s, nostalgia. Felt we that. all Felt remember that. that. Hulk Hogan touched every fucking body. I've never seen... Have you Have you ever seen Trump laugh before? No. Now that I think about it, no. That's actually why he's so funny. When he funny. was jerking off both dicks, when he jerks off both dicks, he does but a little smile. he doesn't smile. even laugh. He <laughs> smiles <laughs> at... Smile, but, but he never, he never, never seen laughs. Two. That was genuine. That, that was a yeah, 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 yeah. And that's yeah, why yeah. he's so funny is because he never breaks, so everything he says, you actually think he's serious. You never know when he's being sarcastic or not. Hulkamania, but bro. Hulkamania, bro. Hulkamania. Here, bro. I'm telling you, everybody, everybody feels Hulkamania. Mm -hmm. If you a certain age and you grew up in that era, oh, you yeah. feel it. So everybody that was clowning, you know, Hogan, because it did look like idiocracy, right? But the reality is, that's what you want. Go out there and make people feel something. Amen. Then when he finished, he did the oh. <laughs> to the podium, like I, the DNC gotta have somebody out there. Who can the DNC bring out? The Cardi Rock. B. Who? The Rock. Rock. Nah, Rock can't corny. do that right heavy now. Corny, nah. You don't Rock think the do Rock that. could do that? The Rock's not but they go, people just gonna be like, oh, you got they had a wrestler, so you got a wrestler. Uh, it's nah. gotta be something else. There's only one nostalgic person who's barbecue still, who's still relevant it's, now. This guy. Who's barbecue? The Haitian dictator. Huh? Barbecue. <laughs> I don't know who that the is. guy who took over Haiti. I don't know who that is. You remember is. when Barbecue took over Haiti? No. What you mean remember? He's still <laughs> Is he still the leader of Haiti? Yeah, they gotta get I Barbecue. No, if I was the Democrats, I would get John Stewart. Let John Stewart come out there and deliver one of those epic monologues. Let the Daily Show writers write it. You know what I mean? He don't need no help with that with y'all. Let John Stewart come out there and do one of those epic monologues, straight to camera, making fun of everybody, making fun about government, making fun about the whole political process, making fun about how much of a shit show we've seen. Like, give it to both sides. Like, let him come out there. And give it to both sides. I'm not here as a Democrat. I'm not here as a Republican. I'm here as a concerned American. Yeah. I just know that this is the place I can come and get my shit off, you know, where it would probably be received a little bit better. Mm. That's, that's interesting. That's what I would do. And then you look like the reasonable party. Then you look like the middle line party. Absolutely. And you get off of the gay shit. Absolutely. They also got to limit the amount of rainbows at this fucking DNC. If the whole thing is, is a rainbow party, it's going to be a bad thing. I would actually say no rainbows. <laughs> nah, you gotta. Have I would it. actually say, but, no but, but see, one of their biggest weapons. Or Buttigieg. That's what I'm saying. But they're, he's 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 a rainbow on a cloudy day. Like you don't even know that there's a <laughs> rainbow going mean. on there. But, but he's their, he's one of their biggest weapons. He has to be. No, there. he's. I, I wish he was actually the nominee. He's phenomenal. I really like him. I but, love Pete. I do like Pete a lot. No, he's a beast. You know what Pete is so smart at? And what? I've said this before. Pete has never stopped coming to Breakfast Club. And what I mean when I say that is, it don't look like pandering when they start coming during elections. Uh, okay. mm. He's always engaged nah, he's with our polished, audience. Because that's what Trump does. Mm. Trump is always polished. calling in the conservative radio. Nah, he's polished. He might be CIA, but he's polished. You think he's CIA? That's the word on the street. That's the word on the street. Really? Yeah, that's the word on the street. What does CIA stand for? <laughs> <laughs> Cocking ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what baby. they gonna do? Yeah, baby. When the booty jam yeah, comes in, you. <laughs> My God. You ain't even see that D Wade Braun. I, I know. I did. That was <laughs> Come on. Easy, Alex. Easy. 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 Oh, we've been doing this for a decade. A decade, baby. It's we what do we it do. We're doing it in our fucking sleep. That's nothing. Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. By the way, by the way, yeah. the other reason I like Pete, <laughs> okay. he would appreciate that joke. Yeah, he would appreciate that joke. Damn right. He's been on Breakfast Club enough, hearing me say wow shit like that, <laughs> that he would appreciate that joke and That's he would awesome. laugh at it. You I know, love that dude. You know who else would appreciate it? Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who also needs to be on the DNC stage. I don't like her first name a lot. Gretchen? <laughs> that shit is like a witch. Well, they call her Big Gretch for nah, sure. I can't do it. Can't Big do it. Gretch. I don't think Gretchen, I don't like that name. It's like a name from like uh, this, this, this uh, what is it, the seven the Salem dwarfs. witch hunt. Yeah, that yeah, that like, might, yeah. I, don't, I don't, it's too much. They, she got to switch that up. Does she have another name? They call her Big Gretch. Um, <laughs> Big Gretch is awful. 
Well, the Detroit gave her that name. They got a, they, this dude did a rap song, GMC Cash. He did a rap song. I said, Big Gretch. Big Gretch, pull it up, Taylor. <laughs> Big Gretch. Big Gretch. I love her book, too. She got a book out called True Gretch. And, um, oh, God. She's got a whole chapter. <laughs> she's got a whole chapter in the book about loving dirty humor. And how dirty jokes are the best way to fucking communicate. By the way, and, it, and it's like chapter one. Cause she's setting the tone. She's like, I got it right here. I want Yeah, yeah, I need that. She's late. Yeah, how about like she's the one that got kidnapped by the FBI? Yep. It's called uh, what's the name of the chapter? Is it this song right here? Yes. Yes. Hey, Don't let the cross on her face because that's big grits. What? We what? The we got big grits. Did they you hear the her. first line? Balls on her face because that's big grits. He ain't say that. <laughs> he said. <laughs> he didn't say that. Oh, what? Because that's big grits. What? Let me hear Balls it. on her face because that's big grits. Yes. Hey. Hey. No, he no, no, said boss. Hey. Boss. For our governor. For our governor. Hey, Grinch. No boss. No, he said boss on her face because no, that's big red. No, 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 no boss on her face. No boss on her face because that's no buffs, man. Buffs are the glasses that they wear in the show. No, brother. No, brother. No. Okay. I see why you like this song. Yeah. I like buffs. But look, that's what. Don't let the bullies get you down. A note on gallows humor. Let me see that shit. The first chapter in the book, and she talks about how she loves dark fucking humor, yo. Big Gretz might be my girl. I didn't know Big Gretz was like this. That's what we need, though. Woo! People gave me other nicknames over years, like Stretching, Gretchen. <laughs> <laughs> she said that for real, though. Yeah. yeah. No. They called her Gravity Gretch. Yo, <laughs> so I returned to Michigan with a busted face and a torn up knee, and my dad, who just paid thousands of dollars for braces to fix the gap between my now non-existent front teeth, could only shake his head. Gravity Gretchen he called oh, me man. and the nickname stuck I've been in a I've been a klutzy child banging into things and falling and even though that girl pushed me the episode served to cement my reputation but unlike when the boys nicknamed me greedy Gretchen I didn't mind gravity Gretchen damn it was funny because it was true and because my dad laughed when he called me that it helped me learn how to not take myself too seriously ooh, ooh. <laughs> that's what I'm Floor saying seats to the Knicks <laughs> Mm. It's a good. It's a, as far as well, that's a really good read, and it's a quick read. It's only like 180 pages long. But my point is, that's what the DNC needs on the stage. The DNC needs the Gretchen Whitmers, the Josh Shapiro's, the Pete Buddha judges, the, the the Jasmine Crockett's, the people who have personality. I think you need to say something. What Yo, you, you need DSU? to get on stage and say something. Yo, eh, they already think I'm a Democratic shield. I don't want to go that far. Yo, but what if we just what if we just write a little piece, John Stewart? No, no, no. What if we just have a nice little piece? Charlemagne just goes up there, absolutely bodies it. Bad no, bad. Uh, and then you say, <laughs> let's not act like I wouldn't body. It. Let's not act like no, I wouldn't body. We know you body. You body. would. That's one, what I'm saying. That's one of the greatest perfect. orators of the 25th century. Is it we in the 25th? What century? We it in? don't matter because you're still gonna be that when we're in the 25th century. <laughs> It don't matter. Let it. Let him cook. Yeah, that's right. That's let right. Let him cook. <laughs> you thought, I think they you need thought he was ninety one. <laughs> Yo, they need Charla. You just prove my point. <laughs> Yo, they need Charla. They do. They need Charla. You be perfect. DNC. Where is the DNC? It's in uh, Chicago this year. Oh, oh. that's perfect. It's in Chicago, but they got to put on a show. The RNC put on a show. We cannot act like I watched all three days of that shit, and I, I was like, man, they got it. They you know, got you know, it. But you know who dropped the ball? Ooh, Donald fucking Trump. Yep. Yo, my man just got shot in his head. That's all the more reason that he should. You know what he fucked up at? Where he fucked Being up? himself. Um. That, that we should. Donald Trump should have walked off that stage, mm. and we all should have been like, "Damn, he full of shit." But that was good. Mm. Cause he should have went up there and been Barack Obama. Mm. It should have been about hope. I thought he did do that. No. Started. Oh, I, I only he was... watched about the first, like, 30 no, minutes or something. Right. Not then, even that. It should then, have been about hope. Then he went off script. Then. Love, <laughs> happiness. He should have talked about how he's always believed in God, but now his faith in God is stronger. Oh, I fire. saw angels. That's fine. He should have literally said, I yeah. saw an angel. Yeah. And in the, the angel said, it's not your time, Donald. Whoo. Move to the, move. Whoo. And then he, he, he had one line he kept fucking up because that could have been his pivot. He kept saying, like, I shouldn't be here. He's like, when I, when, I, when I started talking about immigration, it saved me. 
Yeah. Remember yeah. he said he turned his head because he yeah. had his immigration stats on the monitor. He should have been like, so it made me think, we do need a more secure border. How do we do that peacefully? How do we take care of people? Like he should have just been a totally different person. We should have been there like, I don't believe nothing that just came. I don't believe one word that came out of his mouth. But damn, that was good. Yeah. Cause you know who that would have been for? Who? The undecided, mm -hmm. the hypothetical swing voters, mm -hmm. the independents who don't know what the fuck they're gonna do. You got the base. You could have just gave a little right. wink to the base, like you yeah. got here for Nesty. Magga, magga, magga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all. Yeah. That's all. And you would have got credit because they already was on your dick. Yeah. Because they already tampered down the rhetoric around Trump. You know, they already had stopped all of the, he's a threat to democracy and this and that. You could have just said it is time for us to become one. Yeah, he should have done country. that. I thought he did that because when I was nah. watching the first 30, it sounded like he was like cool, yeah, calm, maybe collected. Maybe like the first 10, 15, he was like that because he was reading the actual teleprompter. And then he went and off they, they teleprompter. Said he off. And then and we started then, to dance. You shouldn't have did that. Yeah. Well, we're going to see. You shouldn't have did that. You shouldn't have did that. He, if he, if he would have stayed the course, hmm. he would have made, he would have put a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on Democrats. I mean, they do have the pressure. Like, nah, not no more. Who's voting Democrat? Probably about 80 million people. Right. Man, get the fuck out. Ain't nobody voting for Kamala Harris. Watch. What? Are you All right. By the way, I don't know. <laughs> it's been tripping. so funny right. to see everybody jump on the Kamala train immediately. Like, it was unanimously accepted that she was kind of boring, weird, and goofy for fucking, what, the last, what, four years? Maybe even before that. She got lobotomized by Tulsi Gabbard in the debate. Everybody one, said the one exact bad bar, thing. One bad like, bar. There's a million different things. Everybody was talking about her actual record, the fact that she's keeping these people in jail with the drug. Uh, Not with true, the, though. But whatever, that was still the conversation. That was the narrative. I got the you. Narrative, like, and then a second she becomes the, <laughs> she, the, second she becomes the nominee, the, the, everything was forgotten. Immediate amnesia. You always talk about how like Republicans get in line. Democrats get in line, bro. But, but that, Just, yes, yes. So but, but, who but, but, who but, should I follow? Yes, listen, yes, yes, yes. Is, but whatever that, you but, say, daddy. But that's whatever why, you but say. But that's why it was good for President Biden to step down. Right. Because he was causing disarray yeah. when there didn't need to be no disarray. Nobody wanted to follow you. You yeah. need a leader that people want to follow. So what are you what are you following in Kamala? What do you see in her that you like? Well, I've, I've, I've supported Kamala since 2020. And there's, I, I can point to three things that I like. I can point to the fact that I love you know her 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 mental health advocacy and she's put her money where her mouth is since she's been vice president I, i've been gave her props for that you know even though i do what did not she do what did she do 285 million dollars to mental health initiatives to increase the number of mental health professionals right i think that they marketed it terrible mm -hmm. nobody even fucking knew unless you know. follow her and unless you know are in the mental health space i love her stance on small businesses she has absolutely positively helped not just small businesses around the country, but in particular small back black businesses with her economic empowerment plan. Those are things that I've always, always liked about her. Those are things that I actually supported her on. Her black maternal health thing. I'm a, a father of four. I've watched my wife go through, you know, extremely hard births. I've seen doctors firsthand. Well, we don't have no epidural, so you can just deliver it. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I got money. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm <laughs> right? And I've seen that happen to her. So those are three things that I can point to in particular where I could be like, all right, regardless of, you know, how you may feel about the about her, the individual, these are the issues that I can rock with, right? And she's the type of person that I don't have a problem saying, okay, yeah, I'm going to vote for her. I'm going to vote for her. I didn't even want to say that about Joe Biden. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, didn't, I didn't even want to say that. So you're saying she's an upgrade to Joe Biden? I just don't. I just don't Easy know anything upgrade. about her. Like I just haven't heard anything about her. I don't know what she's good at. I don't know what she right. believes in. She just seems like a cog in the Democratic machine. And let me clarify: What's wrong with that? there are cogs in the Republican machine. Yeah. But to me, it's just another. If if I don't exactly. If I want to know what I'm voting for and I'm going to vote for a person and a human being, then I want to know what their specific beliefs are. And now she's going to have time to express those. And I will say I'm a little too close to the situation because, you know, back in 2016, when I was like, yo, who's next? Like, who's going to be that person in the future that yeah. people are going to rally around, yada, yada, yada? You know, she was a senator then, and that's like, I just you know, came, came, didn't just come across her. Of course, you know, just doing research. And I'm like, okay. So I started watching her in Senate hearings and, you know, how she would be getting at him. I'm like, oh, okay. 
I like her energy. Mm. So we invited her on Breakfast Club. She came to Breakfast Club in 2000. Her first Breakfast Club interview, I believe, was 2017 mm. when she was a senator. And I thought she was cool then, like just having a conversation, just vibing. And, you know, when she decided to run for president, I was on the campaign trail with her. I was in Brooklyn, Somerville, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Like I was out there with her. Like I've had conversations with her. I've had, you know, conversations with her sister, Maya. Maya used to work on Hillary's campaign. That's why I met Maya. I didn't even know Maya and Kamala was related. I remember when Maya came there with Kamala, I was like, oh, you working with Kamala Harris now? And she was like, that's my sister. And I was like, oh, Harris, Harris. I didn't even put two and two together. Yeah. So my point is I have, you know, spent a time with her on air and off air. So I do know where her heart is and I do know where she was limited over the last four years. Now, is it frustrating for me? Absolutely. Because when you see, a, when you know a person and you know where their heart is and you know what they want to do, but you see the handcuffs put on them mm -hmm. and, and when you're with them, they're one way, but then in front of the camera, they turn into super politician. And I'm like, you don't have to, no, you don't have to be that. Be like, yourself. You, the language of politics is dead. Dead. You, Trump killed it. Give him credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So being that we know the language of politics is dead, what I'm hoping over the next 100, three days or whatever it is, we really truly get to see her. And I saw, I, I've seen glimpses of it this week in the speeches that she's been given. Now, I will say this. From the people that I've spoken to that have interacted face-to-face -face with Kamala, they find her very charming. She is. When you are a public figure, it is very easy to create narratives around you. Like, I've seen all this stuff that they do with the... I mean, she probably has, like, hundreds of hours of footage of her giving speeches. It's very easy to just create these narratives that make her look bad. Absolutely. Like, she says unburdened in all her speeches. It's like, you could do the exact same thing with Barack Obama. You could do the exact same thing with Trump. You could do the exact same thing with whoever you want. Any with us. With us. <laughs> you, can, you can place whatever narrative you want out there with clever editing and enough footage. So I don't immediately just believe in these things. I still need for her to convince me that she's worthy of running this country. I'm with you. I'm not, listen, but that's the whole I point. I know of, Trump I'm with is. You. That's the whole, <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point of campaigning. Yeah. But I need her to convince me. That's the whole point of campaigning. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. like, you're absolutely right. She yeah. got to go out there and earn people's Yes. Both. And the way that she can do that is not only charming the people, because that is very effective, obviously, but like, tell us what you want to do. Tell us what you believe in and tell us what you're going to execute. Now, and, and by the way, I'm basing this off an agenda she had in 2020. Right. 2024, I don't, you know, I, 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 I still know some of her agenda, but uh, I don't know what her future, future plans are. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's just going to be interesting. I just want to see her be herself. Yeah. If she's herself over the next 103 days, oh, we are in for a good ride. Now, because styles make fights, Andrew Show. <laughs> and this is going to be one of the best we've ever seen. And I'm so, going to tell you why. Yeah, tell me. First of all, I, I, I don't like the identity politics of it. Now, I don't care about the woman of color or the woman part, but this is where the woman part comes into play for me. Roe v. Wade has been abolished. Yeah. If you're a certain age, there are less constitutional rights available for you than when you were born. I'm 46 years old. So there was more constitutional rights when I was born than now. Roe v. Wade has been abolished. A woman can speak to that better than a man. A woman can speak to, you know, women needing their reproductive rights better than a man. It's right. gonna be hard for Trump to go, they don't even try, they try not to bring abortion up really, mm -hmm. unless they're talking to each other. Because he's distancing himself from it. He's Yes, but it's, he, she's gonna bring it to him. Yeah, right? but th yeah, th that might not work though because her bringing it up alienates her from those hardcore conservatives that are completely against abortion. I think she's willing to take that risk. No, 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 but they're never going to vote for her anyway. But those people aren't going to not vote for Trump, even if he's more lenient about abortion. They only have one option that's going to speak to the rest of their beliefs, mm -hmm. and that's Trump. So I don't think it moves the needle anyway. But the abortion thing moves the needle on the independents well, and the undecided. What I think it does, I, I think that the move for Trump is just to support women's rights to choose because he will gain all the middle ground, he'll gain all the independence, but he won't lose any of the extreme conservatives because they have nobody else to vote for. But he already fucked that up by mm -hmm. championing Roe v. Wade so hard, saying, I did that. I abolished abortion. Mm. I abolished women's rights. Well, now he's going, I didn't do it. I think it should be in the States. The States too should late. have that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, well, that's, what, that's what he was saying. It's, it's yeah. not too late because... The beautiful thing about this era, and I think we talked about this on the podcast before, you could throw a bunch of things out there. 
See what sticks. You know what I'm saying? It, it, not even about what sticks. I got a sound bite for anything. Yeah. Damn. Trump supports abortion. Look. Trump's yeah. against abortion. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a sound right. bite for everything. Yeah. Kamala Harris is against reparations. Look. Yeah. Kamala Harris is for reparations. Look. Like, yeah. there's a there's literally a sound bite for everything. So it's just about what you go, uh, what you go to look for. The other thing, she's a prosecutor. He's a convicted felon. Yeah. Now, I don't like the whole. It's a fun matchup. Yeah, but I don't like I don't like how they're demonizing convicted felons. I'm a fucking convicted felon. Yeah. There's plenty of convicted felons in America. Yeah. Like there's plenty of convicted felons who have gone on to do amazing things in this country. Yeah. Alex is a oh no he's a, he's, a, he's an international war criminal. <laughs> Alex, Alex is an international war criminal. I mean, you Alex know? got into a fight in another so, country. You step, beat up step you it beat up, up step you up. beat so, up public <laughs> you beat up a public official yeah. in another country. Uh -huh. You're actually an international war criminal. Yeah. Let's go. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm surprised we didn't break out into world war after I'm that. Telling you. An American law officer. Yes. A member of government. Yes. America, a, a member of American government attacked a public official yes. in a foreign land. Come on, That bro. is a declaration of war. That's a declaration Pussy of fucking Sweden. war. Pussy ass. Pussy ass. Pussy ass, Sweden. Pussy ass, Sweden. That's what you get for remaining neutral, Sweden. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Pussy ass. Listen, uh, but, but it Pussy is. Pussy ass. But the whole thing of him being a criminal and her being a prosecutor, that's a good matchup. I mean, it's fun for the paper, yeah, for sure. It's, it, but it can be fun for her language. She already said she the, the shit she been spitting this week. Yeah. Where she breaks down, I take down sexual predators and I take down scammers, and then she's able to list the crimes that he's committed. And she's like, I know your type. Mm. God damn. Those are wow, good, wow, those wow, are good wow, bars. Wow. Oh shit, you got a clean um, bill of health, Chris? Come fuck him up. <laughs> we come were, fuck him up. We were just, <laughs> we were just <laughs> that's what he's. That's what she got to do. Come fuck him up. We were, we were just talking about the, this how styles make fights, and I think this is a good matchup. You think Kamala got it because of she, the fact she's a woman and she can really push the Roe v. Wade being abolished thing. She can really push the uh, w you know women need their reproductive rights. She can really push the prosecutor versus criminal thing. What do you think? I think when I've seen her, at what I, <clears throat> sorry, what I think is her best is when she's in a fight, for sure. Yes. Remember how she snapped at me when I had her on fucking the God's yeah. Honest Truth? Yeah. When I was pushing her? <laughs> yeah. Remember how she fucking snapped at me? I never forgave her for that. Nah, I love it, because guess what? That's her. Well, that's, yeah. that was a, that was that's an off air conversation on air. Tell her to bite her fucking tongue next nah, time nah, she nah, talks nah, to you. Like that. I don't want you. Yo, no, bite your tongue. Nah, Killer Cam, you don't bite boy. your tongue no yo, more. Killer Cam is it, fire. It's oh, no that's more biting fire. your tongue. She needs a thing like that. Like if it's Teflon Don, it got to be Killer Cam. She is. That's what I call her. What, what you what, mean? What, what, hey, yo, what? RNC, Can't DNC, we are here for all your comedic needs. That's what I'm saying. What do saying? you need, yo? Pay the boys. <laughs> Pay the boys. We outside. <laughs> what do you need? Huh? We already know what time it is. Man, I hit him with one last week here on Brilliant. What this. you got? I wish I had did it on Corbett when got? I was on Corbett. What you got? When I was talking about J.D. Vance what you and how J.D. Vance once called Trump Hitler. And I was like, how you go from Hitler to being on stage giving him that hawk? Tour. That's what, see? And then I was like, that's what you call a full-throated endorsement. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was hard. Full-throated endorsement? <laughs> yeah, full-throated endorsement Full throated crazy. endorsement is crazy. Yeah. How have no rappers not incorporated that word? She gave me a full-throated endorsement. <laughs> that's fire, <laughs> man. Is that also what uh, Elon Musk said when he endorsed Trump? What, what did he say? What? I know he had a term, but was it full-throated? Every, I got that from the politicians. They, they say that on cable news. I think networks. he said yeah, that. Full-throated is, that is, if, especially when you're saying hawk to it and then you go full-throated. Full-throated endorsement. Yeah. But also the, the, the what's his face? The Elon endorsement is just because one of his kids is a rainbow. So he's just trying to shut that thing down. He just, he reneged though. He said, he, at first they said he was giving him 45 million a month. Then he said he's not. He said that yesterday. Oh, he was like, that's cap. That's what he said yesterday. I don't know, but he did come out saying his kids are rainbow, and that's really the reason why. What part why of the rainbow? You can't just say rainbow, bro. It's different flavors. What, what skittle is it? Rainbow is trans, bro. Let's just, that's trans. No, it's not gay. It's rainbow, too. Nah, gay is gay. Gay is the OGs. Like, gay is just, just the best. Gays are like straight now, right? That, Which is great. Gays is the homies. Like they always yeah, been the homies. Yeah, they always We've been always the homies. We've always gotten along. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, always yeah, love yeah, partying. Yeah. They right. throw the best That's parties. Right. We out That's there. Right. They get all That's the right. fucking plays on Broadway. We go. We I, we gotta stop this narrative. Like straights yeah, and gays right. don't get along. We, we love food. We love fashion. We love art. We love music. We've been we love sex. forever. We love if, if what? You, if you listen, what? <laughs> what? What the fuck just happened? If you a straight man, if you a straight man, you can relate to lesbians. Thank you. Right. And if you are a straight man that got gay homies, you know why they love dick. Thank you. But the rainbows what? is going crazy, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, the rainbows is going know. crazy. <laughs> that was no. crazy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what he said. Exactly what he said. You don't know why your gay homies love dick, yo? Yeah, for sure. Yes, man. That shit Come feels on, mad. Why, why do they love dick? Because huh? they love it, yo. No, why, why do they love dick? Why, 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 love can straight, why can't straight guys relate to it? Because we know how much girls love dick making all exactly. your Exactly. Making all the sounds <laughs> girls make. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know how good so much feel for you making them stupid ass sounds. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> that's why, by the way, gay men, I gotta admit, gay men, y'all be cheating. And I'm gonna tell you what made me think about this randomly. I was listening to Horrible Decisions, yeah. and they had Mr. Marcus on. And you listen to Harvard Decisions on the Black Effect Guy Radio Podcast Network. And the name of the podcast is 18,000 Moans or some shit like yeah. that. And I was like, yo, moans are important. Like, you want to hear a genuine some moan. Some positive encouragement. But not only just from men. Women like to hear that, yeah. too. From women, each other. No, no. they're from their <laughs> men. From their no, men. No. We want to hear y'all. Y'all want to hear us say shit like, take that. Take no, that. I didn't realize that until recently. Just really? someone feel a little stuffed. Hey, man, you I used to be a quiet... No, I'm not, but I let out a moan the other day that was crazy. Go, 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 go. Like when I did it, I heard gay. I'm not gonna lie. What did you do? What did you do? I just heard it, bro. I was, I, I, it was, I don't know what came out of me, bro. It was just like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> say that shit. Talk that I, shit. I, I, I'm listen. All I'm gonna say is I let out a moan. And it was it was really wild. It was Say like it. It, oh, the, how it sounded. Yeah, it went like this. I could I because I saw it in my mind. It went. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, went <laughs> it went high. Then it went under. It came back up again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might finger your ass again, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> you might be fingering your ass again, bro. We back to this. We nah, back to nah, this. Nah, that was nah, fucking seven nah, years nah, ago, nah, bro. Nah, <laughs> the nah, only nah, way nah, man nah. can make that sound <laughs> is if the fingers go in the ass, bro. <laughs> 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 and then, man, and so I was like, damn. <laughs> but women like to hear that. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had my wife with a good one the other day. And was, she told you, right? She, oh, she was bro. like, I like when you moan. Like, she was tight. That you moan? <laughs> she did not like it. She did not like really? it. Really? Because I was like, huh. <laughs> 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 What you gonna do <laughs> when the Trump mania comes in you? <laughs> Yo, come in and scream at MAGA is crazy. You know, Make America gooey again. <laughs> Make America gooey again. Okay? And if you do it, if you are a if you are a gay man that's MAGA. <laughs> <laughs> you run it nut. up. Run when it you up. nut and scream MAGA, make anal gooey, gooey again. again. <laughs> make anus is gooey again. <laughs> make anus is gooey again. <laughs> MAGA! <laughs> Yo, make anus is gooey again. There is a MAGA for every oh community. Oh my God, man. How did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> we we here. About, this is how we moves. got here. Because the rainbows done took over. That's why we got here. But it was somebody. Oh! You know what I wanted to say? I said all of that to say, yeah. gay men yeah, got they... it easy. Who the fuck won't moan if he sticks something in your ass? Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? You, we got prostate checks in here. It's hard not to let a little, uh, oh. out. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 it's, hard, it's, harder, it's harder for straight men to get moaned. Are you moaning for your doctor, bro? No, that's <laughs> crazy. I did You moaning for the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you, you looking out for the doctor's <laughs> ego? <laughs> you looking out for the doctor's ego? I didn't give the doctor enough <laughs> last time. Let me give him a little something else. You never got it nah, done before? I got it done by a machine. What? Ooh, what? Proctic? Nah, the, when they shoot the water in your ass or whatever. Oh, oh. you had a, a oh, day. Yeah, baptism. 
I had the colonic. <laughs> colonic don't feel like the prostate, though. But if you guys nah. don't make it sound, doesn't mean y'all used to it. <laughs> See, I'll be thinking that shit too. <laughs> actually, actually, I got a uh, prostate exam update I've been meaning to oh, share. Oh, no, you've been yeah. pushing yeah, that back. Because it, it involves a show. They so, ran a train on you again? So I went back, <laughs> right? You went back to the same doctor. I go back to the same guy. So for context. <laughs> he let the student do it. No, yeah. You got to tell me the original story, doctor. No. For those the original who story Yo, was. This is too crazy. I went about, let's say, six months ago because I had a hernia. Mm -hmm. And the doctor who had an uh, intern training with him. Before he checked for the hernia, said, you're due for a proctate exam. Yeah. So I said, fine. Bent over, they lubed me up. And what he didn't tell me was the student was waiting. So after the doctor went up and felt, I felt this other finger kind of <laughs> sitting there. Damn. With no consent, by the With way. With no consent, no knowledge. Mm. And then the second finger, which was not as smooth as the, as the first finger. Guy's nails weren't cut. Oh, damn. Like, damn. I felt it. He wasn't a pro yet. Yeah, 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 he yeah, went yeah. raw? He didn't put gloves yeah, on? He had to go back and feel his, like, and feel his nail. What? Yeah. Because he was young. He you died. got a case, bro. Yo, hold so on. anyway. Whenever you ready. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. I like what he just said. He goes, I can feel his nail because he was wait, young. Did he have what does that mean? <laughs> What the young, fuck? Inexperienced. <laughs> not young. Like inexperienced. Young Wolverine as a, as a physician. Oh, oh, oh. He wasn't sliding in in a way that was accommodating to The other guy has done it 30,000 times. Yeah, this yeah. might have been his third or fourth. I don't know. Oh, wow. So you got really fingered by a rook. I got fingered by a rook. <laughs> okay. so did he have gloves on? He did have gloves on. Okay. So anyway, I have a hernia. I didn't really fully understand that hernias don't heal on their own, right? I was a little naive about that. So I go back to the guy maybe three months ago, and I come in the office to talk about the hernia. And the first thing he says is, okay, so you need another proctate exam. So all I hear in my mind is this room, right? <laughs> like I just hear, the you know, you know I, like, I just had one three months ago. Why do I, you don't get <laughs> yeah, that. Right. So all I hear is like. Bro, you giggled when you got fingered in your ass, Chris. I didn't giggle. I just started to <laughs> protest. I was like, because I heard all your voices. What you mean protest? <laughs> Meaning like, why? Just take the man's why? fist out your ass. You had one fuck? six months ago, bro. Yeah. I just fuck. had no. fuck. I just fuck had one. crazy. Yo, <laughs> bent over getting fingered in your ass. Fire. Yo, that's crazy. Blood, blood rolling down one cheek. You know what I'm saying? Because that Fire. fucking jagged nail that ripped something. Blood rolling down one cheek. Fight. Fight. <laughs> anyway, I started hearing the train jokes in my mind and all that shit. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to let this guy do this. Yeah, good stand-up for yourself. But then, again? no, just, this oh. is just him solo. But then I was like, I have an actual medical doctor yeah. telling me this is what I need. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm worried about what, we said. what the brilliant idiots are going to say. And I was like, and that's, that's, isn't that a terrible way to die of cancer? Let's yes, exactly. that's why that's men right. die of cancer at 50. Because right. we're hearing Yes, our first call is a fucking rainbow. We encourage it. Listen, just like y'all come up to us and y'all have y'all dick jokes. Yeah. Come up to us and share your prostate feeling gay stories. Let's get it yeah. out there. That's all. Let's, Let's get get normalize there. this yes, You're not a brilliant idiot if you have not felt gay during a prostate exam. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Give Facts. us a good story. Wiggle your ass a little bit. Make it fun. Make your prostate exam fun, you know what I'm saying? Do gay dudes just check their own? <laughs> like, is that you know how like women get pedicures and shit? Like, but they can also paint Yo, their nails. Masturbation is crazy. Yo, <laughs> <shut up>. Masturbation <laughs> is in your own ass. This guy's crazy. crazy. You, masturbation Yo, is crazy. Yo, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we got the title for that, for that episode. Oh. All I'm saying is it's gonna be a it's gonna be a real fun next hundred and three days. And I'm gonna tell you what I'm not doing. I nobody should be emotional about none of this shit. Like whoever you want to vote for, they vote can't for. they can't help themselves. They, got, they, 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 got, they, they already they commented stop. like yo. They gotta stop. They gotta stop. And I'm gonna tell you, the politicians. We don't care. All man. the politicians have to do a better job. Like I, I, I watched the, the the senator in uh Ohio the other day, and he's like, it's gonna be a civil war if we lose. Why, bro? I really want to know what the he fuck. What do the people. politicians have going on that we don't know about? Yes. That they so angry at each other. That's what I was thinking when don't. you sent me the security <laughs> message. <laughs> <laughs> said, what the fuck is this? Oh, <laughs> I went to a gun range that weekend. I'm like, Yo, what's going on? Now? But, but don't bring us into this shit. All we're doing is making votes 
based off who we think is best to run this country. Yeah, but the I bad. ain't on no red shit, no blue shit. I ain't no Democrat. I'm not no Republican. I'm just voting my interests. But the best way to get people to vote is to shame them because humans crave connection so much. So if you make them feel ostracized for not agreeing with you. That's why. But this that's another thing we got to remember during this time. There are going to be tons of people that uh, that will like hold you up to a pedestal or me up to a pedestal when we say the things that they agree with. A lot of those people don't give a fuck about us. They just like the fact that we are echoing their sentiments. Fox News has been doing that to me for it, a whole year. Exactly, but that's an important thing to think. Yeah. And here's the thing, audience, we know that. Hmm. We're aware. Right. They are the core people who actually know who we are. They care about us. They that's don't right. give a fuck which side that we vote for or which people that we resonate with. And then the other people that are essentially just using us because we agree. And the second we disagree with them, they on that ass. They did it to me oh, this you week. you changed. That's right. You did this. Yeah. I did. I did. We, me and Angela Rod did Jake Tapper this week. And, you know, um, I, I, I said some positive things about Kamala, but if you've paid attention to my rhetoric, I've always said positive things about Kamala. Even when I've said I'm disappointed in her, yeah. I've given my reasons why. My main reason why is because I, I felt like, you know, she got into the White House and I didn't know who this person was anymore when I saw them in front of the camera. Mm. Like, that's one, of, that's one of my main points of, of contention. So... Me saying positive things and saying, yeah, I would, I would, I would support Kamala Harris if she became the nominee. Now it's a thing, but now the left uses that. Yeah. The left is using that to say, Charlamagne the God endorses Kamala Harris, whatever, whatever. But I've always said, you can go back, me and Stephen Yo, Smith did an interview this year, and, this year, and I was like, I still believe in Kamala. I got, a, I got an honest question to ask Talk you. To oh, play this clip real quick, though, just to insert it, just to have it. Yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah. What is that, Chris Christie? In a fight <laughs> for our kids. It's a fight that we can never imagine. I believe wholeheartedly Donald Trump and Butler County's J.D. Vance are the last chance to save our country politically. I'm afraid if we lose this one, it's going to take a civil war to save the country. Why? And it will be saved. It's Why? the greatest experiment Why? in the history of mankind. Why is the president mankind. of the Heritage Foundation saying shit like... if we come down to a civil like, war, I'm... It, it, this is the second, uh, what is the second revolutionary... What do you say? I, I can't remember the exact quote, but this is yes, the second whatever. Yes, and it, yeah. and it, it'll be bloodless if the left allows it. Like, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's politics, bro. It's a lot. Nothing changes. Guys, nothing. We're going to be arguing about abortion for the next 50 years. Nothing fucking. Kamala, Kamala wins. Nothing changes. That's what I'm saying. So. Obviously, vote your interests, vote with the person who... But keep in mind that, like, very little changes in America, and the system is set up that way. But we can't... We shouldn't even look at them like that. We shouldn't even... You shouldn't even look at Kamala as a as a change agent that's just going to wave a magic wand and bring everything back. Yeah. The Supreme Court is still going to be what it is. You know what I'm saying? She's going to continue whatever this Biden thing is doing. But, I, if, but that was always my point. That was always my point when everybody used to be like, you guys, you should be scared of a... Kamala Harris presidency. I'm like, why? She, it's she's going to be the same this. thing that yes. Obama was doing, same yeah. thing if Biden you, was doing. If like, you enjoy right now, then vote for uh, vote for Kamala. I don't enjoy none of it. All right, All right. well, then don't vote for Kamala. But, okay, here's my question about Kamala. Because you, you mentioned something like her being a woman, she could speak on... Um, Women's reproductive women rights. Women's reproductive rights. Abortion rights. Abolished, but it's pretty I, I mean this sincerely. So, and this... It, 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 Having a kid has fundamentally changed every aspect of my life. Of course, it's made me look at I humans want you to get differently. Three more girls, I, I, God, God willing, I love it. God willing. Uh, Kamala doesn't have kids. Can she speak to, relate to, understand what we are going through and the importance? of laws that affect our children and understand the the severity and the stakes that we feel, the vulnerability that we feel. Like I genuinely ask that. I ask the same thing. I had that conversation. I, I would say I would say yes. I had nieces too. Okay, I ain't so, don't give a fuck about it. Okay, for Taylor, if we turn this into an argument. I would say yes because we don't know why she doesn't have kids. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's physical reasons. Yeah, yeah. Or she made Career choices. We don't know. Yeah. So we don't even we don't know the reason why she doesn't have kids. And so I, I have all the empathy in the world. You know how hard it was for us to yeah. get pregnant. Like I, I have all the empathy in the world. But I do look at that. I see people with kids different. I see the way that they prioritize things different. I see the choices they make in their life different. Like it has completely transformed my world. Mm -hmm. And 
not having kids, but being around kids, having nephews, having nieces, having friends that had kids. I did not understand that until I had my own. I I think... Once again, we don't know the reasons why she doesn't have them. mm -hmm. We don't know if she had to make choices like abortion. Yeah. And we don't know. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because... That was actually the topic of conversation. I had some people over for dinner last night. Yeah. And the women who were there. Were, chopsticks? Yo, that was oh fucking God. racist. That okay. was so. Mark that. Listen, can you, mark, can you mark that? Thank you. Let's okay. not mark that. Why yeah. wouldn't he use that in his house? Exactly. That's fucking racial rhetoric it was, it from you guys. Middle Eastern no food. point of yeah. asking. I mean, but your wife. We, we, we do use chopsticks a lot. Yeah. Exactly. That's there was no point of <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I didn't feel that was coming from a pure place. I got to be honest. That was, <laughs> but you felt that fingernail work, though. Yeah. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Don't listen to that. But what were they saying yeah, in between? Just, no, 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 Chris. I want to tell them something. And he did it without the accent. Fire! 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 Okay, go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, they... they, they the, 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 hit the gong after that. Right after he hit that, I want a gong sound effect point. Okay? The, uh, the, the women at the table were saying they believe that... And this is within the context of reproductive rights. I don't... You know, there are other issues, obviously, that involve families and children. But in terms of reproductive rights they were saying they think as a woman even if she doesn't have biological children of her own she intuitively understands that issue the importance there's like there's no way you can be a woman and not be hypersensitive to that topic I mean, actually i i think it's the exact opposite i think really? women who have had kids have a fundamental fundamentally different viewpoint on reproductive rights and the time in which you should be allowed to get it. And every single woman I've spoken to that has had children has said the exact same thing, which is, now I'm not saying late-term abortions do happen. I know that that's kind of like false rhetoric that's out there and there was that whole bickering back and forth on the on the stage, but it's often women who've never had kids that are like, yeah, you should be able to have it up to fucking nine months, whatever, it's just a parasite in your body. It's women who have had kids that go, that felt like a baby, Real early. So the idea of it being possible at six months, fuck no. So I think that that is important information. I'm not saying that this stuff discredits well, her from being able to lead. The, yeah. We I, also but what I'm saying is it is important. And if we are playing that uh, card, if you will, meaning the experiential card as a woman, how she is advantaged on certain issues that Trump doesn't, I wonder if we also go, well, maybe Trump can speak to the future of America in a way that Kamala can because she's not genetically invested in the future of America. Well, but, that, but, but no, uh, well, well, just, about the future of America point, yeah. I think Kamala kills him on that because she's 60. He's 70, what, 7, yeah. 78? Yeah. She's probably going to be around a little bit longer for the future of America than he will. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but to the thing, and because and I in Gretchen Whitmer's book, and I, I'm, I'm probably going to fuck this up, but there was a law being passed in Michigan that had something to do with women's reproductive rights and people... They were, you know, the whole banning of abortions, even with rape or incest or something like that. And she had never told this story until she hit the floor the day that they were supposed to make the vote. And she told a story about a time that she had gotten raped. Oh, my God. And I think she either, uh, I'm I'm fucking the story. Either she thought she was pregnant or she was pregnant. I don't, I'm sorry, uh, Governor Whitman, if I'm fucking the story up. But my point is, she had an experience that people could relate to in regards to the issue. We don't know if, if if the vice president has any of those. And then maybe- She might come out and tell us she- She tried. She, she tried, can't have them. Do. She might have had them. Boy, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know what her lived experience And I have is. all the empathy in the world for that. I'm just saying it is a thing that has fundamentally changed my life. And the way that I view things, the way that I view politics, it's also made my life way more uh, uh, like a microscopic, meaning like, before having kids, I cared way more about what was going on out there mm-hmm. in the world. And now I think my focus is way more inside the family. And I think a lot of people that do have families think in that way. And also to another point, because that was a, a, it's a fantastic point you brought up. I think it's a fantastic question and definitely worth a debate. Even with her not having kids, the choice to not have them is something Trump can't relate to. Yeah. The choice to saying, I chose the 
you know, run for attorney general. I chose to be a senator. I gave my life to, I gave my, uh, you know, my, my, I, I sacrificed my personal for my professional. Trump can't even relate to that. Yeah. So that even that is a conversation that so many women will relate to. There's so many women out there that chose professional over prefer personal. Oh my God. That's why a lot of these things you can't, a lot, a lot of these things <laughs> you can, this is disrespectful. This, 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 <laughs> this, this room is, this room is, wow, it's a danger bro. zone, bro. This room is it's crazy. A, it's, it's a danger zone. I don't even zone. know why I saw that. That was crazy. <laughs> I thought I was the only one who saw it. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was trying to finger Chris. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, but there's plenty of women who choose uh, professional yeah. over personal. And that conversation, Kamala can speak to, and it will relate to so many women. Yeah. So like, once again, that's a, that's, a, that's a W for her, no matter how you slice it. There, there's really no way for Trump to win any of that argument. He just really has to stay away from that, but she's not going to let him. We'll see. We'll see. I don't even think he should debate, debate her. No, Let's see, do you want that to happen? Should. Man, I, what? this is the first time in my life, Yeah. me personally, I'm, I'm only 46, and so somebody can correct me, I'm not that old. I am old, but I'm not old and that old. This is the first time in my life I saw a debate change everything. Uh, that Biden Trump debate changed everything. Yeah. And it wasn't because Trump was good. <laughs> it was Biden just because Biden looked so terrible. Mm -hmm. So now let's think about just the optics of it. 60 years old versus 78. It ain't like Trump don't be out here fucking up words and mumbling and bumbling. Now he looks like the old mumbling, bumbling oh, guy. Oh, you said you don't think he should want to debate? No! Oh, okay. If I, I was Trump, I wouldn't want to debate by the Kamala. You're also oh, just yeah. giving her so much shine. Like, she hasn't given the American people anything to vote for yet. Mm -hmm. One Maybe, debate changes everything. But you're giving her all the eyeballs yeah. in the world because we're going to watch for Trump. And then if she shows up and she delivers, now she also gives us an example of what she wants to do in America. Right. And if that resonates, then that's impossible. Because everybody brings up that one line Tulsi Gabbard had against Kamala. No, she but, bodied her. But bro. they don't bring up the body Kamala got against Biden. The, they the, do. The, the, the body that almost kept her from being VP because everybody around Biden was like, no. Remember what she did to you on that stage? They don't talk about the body she caught with Mike Pence. Caught a body so bad a fly came and landed on Mike Pence's head on live TV. <laughs> and she had him out there looking like shit. <laughs> for real, for real. Like, it don't, go back and watch those Senate hearings. She's, that's her lane. Yeah. Her, she's a prosecutor. Yeah. That's her thing. If I'm Trump, I'm like... Staying away. Nah. It's, you, you, why? Yeah. What's the point? Nah, you make a good point. Uh, let's yeah. play... Some, uh, He's had to be across from a lot of prosecutors this year. So he, he got experience, out. too. <laughs> he does. Uh, let's pay some bills. Let's come back and talk about some other things by any means necessary, all of that good stuff. Uh, what we got, Taylor? Where the bills at? Mando! Salute to Mando for sponsoring this week's episode of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. What's the most valuable thing in the world, Schultz? Uh, breast milk. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, the second most valuable thing, time. Okay, yes. managing yeah. and worrying about body odor used to take up a lot of a lot of time for mm -hmm. people. Uh, a lot of people are paranoid about smelling, especially around midday. Okay, especially here in New York. You know, these women. You know, these guys. They go to work all day. They're here nine to five, and then when there's a party or something, the party starts at six. They live in an out of borough, can't get, make it all the way home. So it's extremely time consuming. You know, just to try to stay fresh. But not any more okay since uh we switched a lot of people on this podcast the mando whole body deodorant we freed up so much time mm -hmm. okay what can you do with more time schultz um i could i could search uh for more places on the black market to sell breast milk you see what i'm saying <laughs> okay that's why mando is effective and long lasting okay here's why mando doesn't cover up odor after the fact with heavy fragrances like certain other deodorants it stops odor Stop, it stops odor at the source by blocking the bacteria on your skin from eating your sweat, which is the actual cause of B.O. Really? Did not know that. Thank yes, you, Mando. Duh. What does this mean? It means Mando is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. That's a long time, but don't test it. You should actually use Mando every day. Absolutely. Give yourself the precious gift of time and get yourself some Mando whole body deodorant. Special offer. New customers get $5 off Mando's best-selling starter pack with code idiots at shopmando.com. Calm, okay, Mando is whole body deodorant. Seriously, it's safe to use anywhere on your body. Pits, package, belly button, butt cracks, stinky crevices, stomach folds, and feet. Mando was created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal BO being misdiagnosed and mistreated, okay? Mando 
Whole deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere, allowing you to put Mando on family jewels without any worry, because Mando is aluminum-free, baking soda-free, cruelty-free, dye-free, and vegan-friendly. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market with your stinky ass. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code that equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code IDIOTS at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. You heard what I said. Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code IDIOTS at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. Guys, this episode is also been brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layouts, and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up tailored to your brand or business and optimized for every single device. Easy launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way that you want. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every single design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology from desktop or mobile. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine, included in any new Squarespace site. So. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's get back to the show. Hezzy, you got some church announcements? Yes, sir. This weekend, we're at the Del Lago Casino up in uh, Waterloo, New York. Then we're at the Mohegan Sun Arena on Saturday. Uh, we add another show in AC uh, the end of the month of August. So uh, August 24th, we had a second show. Tickets available for that. And then the last leg of the tour starts in the fall. Man, go get those. We added shows in, uh, what, San Antonio, Denver, San Jose, Salt Lake City. Uh, we're coming to Milwaukee, Portland, um, Columbus, Cleveland, a bunch more cities. And, uh, yeah, so go check that. Those are the last chances you are. You have to go check out the shore. Also, Honolulu, Hawaii, we're coming out there. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Go to the website. Get the tickets to the website so you don't get screwed by the resellers. And, uh, and yeah, and that's it, man. Uh, my new book, Get Honest with That Line, Why Small Talk Sucks, is out right now. Make sure you go get that everywhere you buy books. This Saturday, I'll be at the Black Male Think Tank in Cincinnati uh, at 1.30 p.m. I will be speaking. You know, uh, I'll be out there talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is how we all can invest in our mental wealth. So, Cincinnati, I'll see y'all this Saturday at the Black uh, Male Think Tank. Yo, Charlamagne, we actually have a very important church announcement. Man, one of our guys, man. One of the guys that makes the motherfucking brilliant idiots go. From day one. Yeah, man. And he works at Black Effect, too. He's a, he's one of our producers at Black Effect as well. As well. My man, Dwayne. Big D, Dwayne Crawford. Yo, give happy everybody born day, baby. happy birthday to Dwayne Crawford. He does all the sound effects. Give yourself all the sound Legend. effects, Dwayne. Drop clues. Legends. Drop clues, bombs, round of applause, all of that good yes, stuff, sir. man. Yes, sir. We love you, Happy Dwayne. born day, brother. Um, let's get back to the show. Charlotte Domus has struck again. Okay, what did Charlotte Domus say? Uh, after the, the RNC, I think it was after the RNC, I was on Breakfast Club, and I said, boy, it's only a matter of time before they leaked that foot. Because after Amber Rose gave her speech and everybody was saying, you know, how it was such an impactful speech. and I mean, it was, because you could see how everybody was talking about it. So... 
I said, watch them leak the footage of her and Jocelyn fighting now. And that's what I was just watching. I was like, God damn. So Breakfast Club Never people, won. let me see, let me see. Philly. Who the fuck is that in the mask? I don't know. Oh, like now she's Halloween. Philly? She was just MAGA she, last week. Now she's she Philly. She's always been Philly. She's just a F MAGA Philly person. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. God damn. No, but she got her. Jim, Jocelyn, you supposed to be a fighter. Damn, somebody from MAGA leaked that then. Somebody wait, from wait, MAGA. Wait, wait, let's see this. I need to see this footage. Yo, she... she Amber, back, Amber, back, Amber, Amber got up to set it off, too. Yeah, she said, what's Go up? back, go back. Go no, back. No, it's not... Wait, just wait. No, I want to hear the setup. No, 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 no. I need the whole... Don't ruin it's it. There's no sound. Go back! Oh, my God. How is there no sound? There's no sound to it. Remember, they oh. never put this out. Yeah, they didn't put that. Part Who the out. fuck is that in the mask with the joke? Is, that, is it like? <laughs> it looks Halloween? like Ema. I think Ema was on that episode. Why you got the saw mask on? Yeah, Amber definitely got the best of that one. Boom. I mean, it's not much. It's just a little kerfuffle. But why is? But if I'm scoring why it off, is Jocelyn her holding her head like hit her. Yeah, if I'm scoring well, it off, no hair. hair. <laughs> she's trying to grab the hair, but she's bald. She's got an Gosh. advantage. So you know, Amber fight like a white girl, bro. Really? Yeah, she grabbed her. She just throwing that hammer punch. <laughs> White girls do the hammer punch. <laughs> and Amber got the best of them. Yeah, she did. Yeah, somebody put that out. They, somebody put that out to get some of that momentum back. They was like, nah, well, let me show you what Maggie can do. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? They was like, don't fucking forget what Maggie is. Nah, she got here, though. Okay. And the taping of what? College Hill? Oh, that was a TV show. I knew uh -oh. somebody was going to leak that, yo. I'm fine. I'm, I might have it now, but I was waiting to see that video. No, oh, okay. All right, so, so, okay, what else we got? What else Let's we got, Taylor? Go. Just know I, I, I also I, dropped the shit about uh, Christians are a cult. Christians you see that? Are a cult. She's, they basically. Oh, oh, on Jason Lee, yeah, with Hollywood Unlocked. I that, did see that. that. I think that's way more damning than that. Oh, I didn't see. Yeah, like she was saying, Christians are a cult. And Christians now, are a cult. These girls, are, you know, the 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 energy after the maggot thing was, we accept anybody, we we don't hold you to your past, we'll bring you on, whatever, and you know, and that's their way of saying we don't care, Amber, if you've been a stripper, you've done this wild shit, and then that thing about Christians being a cult came out, and we're like, all right, we'll see how accepting. Can't all religions be kind of technically defined as cult? Yeah, but you don't want to be called that if you're a Christian, right? Because it's not even, it's, it's not even. A, it's just your pathway to to heaven, bro. To God, it's not yeah, even yeah, just yeah. a religion. It's just this but there is life. a lot of there is there is a lot of cult like things you're with all religion. You are hundred percent right. Like I don't care what the religion is. There's, religion there's, is just, religion, cult like traits. Yeah, religion is a successful cult. Most yeah. cultures don't get that successful. Yeah, but it's also the one pathway to God if you actually believe in the religion. So if if you're a believer, you're like this ain't a cult. This is the truth. Well, what about back in the day when there was no religion? So I'm talking about like when humans were first put here. Like, what was your pathway to God then? <sighs> My boy. <laughs> this guy, is that, that was so disrespectful. That, <laughs> that was blasphemous. I mean, God My damn. boy. I, mean, I, think, I think nature was God back then. I think nature is God now. Well, you can say that, sure. Facts. Uh, what we got, Taylor? By any all means necessary, what is that? It's Pops. What is this Pops? one other job that you're about to get into. Okay, Paul says, that is set it up. Uh, Have you seen her with a tank top on? She has some surprisingly small titties. I feel like I've seen her with no shirt on. Yeah, she got like, but like, it's crazy. This is Brittany Like her Grinder. body is just like crazy. This is Brittany Griner at the uh, WNBA All-Star Weekend. Why are y'all scared to acknowledge and, and, and a somebody, physical fact? And somebody is, who, I don't know this young sister thing. I think this is the shade room. Is this the shade room? Yes. Oh, shout okay. out to Shade Room, bro. But they're uh, they're welcoming and congratulating Brittany and her wife on welcoming their baby boy. Let's listen. Hard and really scary. You're about to be a mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How is that feeling? Pops. 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 Oh, oh, let me get it together. Pops. About to yeah. be a pops. pops. Please tell me how exciting <laughs> that is for you and what you're looking forward to most. I'm super excited. Um, well, I mean, I guess I'll just drop it. He's here. Um, so he's here. Yes. 7, 8, 24. Um, yeah. 7 pounds, 8 ounces. Yeah, that's my man. Um, I love that. He, he is amazing. Uh, they say, what? you know, as soon as you see him, it's just like everything that you thought mattered just goes out the window. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what happens. Um, it's crazy kind of sucks because I got to leave, yeah. you know, but at the same time, uh, yeah, it, he, he'll understand. He'll Expect understand. I think there's... It's actually beautiful to hear yeah. someone talk about their child like that. <laughs> oh I, I thought that was a bit... I'm, not, I'm confused about the whole pop shit. Is that her coming out as Comedians a rainbow? Comedians just have to shit on... 
Now, I'm about to say trans, but I don't think she's trans. I think she just admits that she's trans, but I think I don't think she comes out with it because she knows it will be a whole politicized thing, and then she'll have to play in the NBA. But so what she's doing is she's <laughs> <laughs> what she's doing. Is she's keeping under wraps, but you know that she's. She's, but, but that was beautiful the way that she was talking about her kids. See, man, oh, it's just, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah, you just got, you know, I don't give a fuck about her calling herself pops. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Pop most, that coochie, right? Most nah. women do on Mother's Day anyway. Oh my! Most women god. do what on Mother's Day? Oh my god! <laughs> Why would you call yourself pops on Mother's Day if you're a mother? When they be saying I have to play both parts. Why do they have to so play both parts? That's silly to say. Why say that? You deadbeat ass women. Running your mans out the house so your kid got to grow up with, with just a mommy. Ain't that selfish of these deadbeat ass moms <laughs> running their men out the house so their kid got to grow up alone? How you Forcing reversing? their man to cheat when he don't want to cheat. Forcing their man to go sell drugs, go end up in jail. How you reversing is incredible. I'm not reversing Congrats. nothing. You. <laughs> These deadbeat ass women running their mans out the house. You got good God fearing men that you turn into life of crime and <sighs> now, right. now, now there is something to that because there, there are a lot of women that keep their children away from the men just because out of spite. Yeah, yeah. I literally was just watching a good. Oh, fucking Supercell. That's what, that's one of the uh, one of the roles on Supercell. The baby mom just be trying to keep the father away from the, the child for out no of reason. Spite. They do that shit with their uh, their mouths too. Have you seen Supercell? <laughs> what? what? Fuck. Have you seen it? What's Supercell? <laughs> Fire show on Netflix. You should watch it. It's called Super Supercell. Cell? Supercell. Six, it's only six episodes. It's really fucking good. Salute to Rap Man. It's one of those UK shows. <laughs> shows the UK street life. Oh, fuck. You know what I mean? And it's about people who have, like, uh, the trait of sickle cell. But also that sickle cell trait gives them superpowers. Oh, yeah? It's dope, yo. What is it? The ability to run a little faster and jump a little higher than Shoot everyone else? Strength, all that. Like, they got real superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> they, got real, they got real superpowers, yo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is the point of the show, though. You're joking, but that's really the point of the show. That's literally the point of the show. You ain't seen this yet, Alex? Yeah, so. Oh, you saw it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we spoke about it last week. All right, uh, what else we got? Family Feud... Is this one? <laughs> Family Diddy. Feud. Hold up. Uh, I mean, mm. don't what, to talk about it. But what is the funny. Family Feud thing? That's like when they were trying to decide who was the best oh, rapper. I saw that. Like, I mean, listen, it's Family Feud. Like, uh, it says survey says they're probably, who, who, they're not surveying hip hop heads, y'all. Family Feud, what you should look at this list and see is these are just the most popular rappers of all time. Yeah. Like, if somebody said to me, who are the most popular rappers ever? Like, who are the eight rappers that you can go to anybody with? I'm talking about an old person in the Midwest, you know, somebody down south, somebody west coast, and say, these are the eight rappers. I guarantee you'll know them. Those are the eight I would choose. Snoop Dogg. Is Eminem even on there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, pull it up, go, go back to it. Snoop Dogg, Tupac. Hold on, baby, pull it up, Taylor. Why well, I got to wait? Oh, Jay-Z, no. Snoop Dogg, Tupac, Eminem. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to pause it. It's not going to happen. Oh, cool, Jay. And then four was um, Dr. Dre. Dr. Okay, pause it. Pause it when you get Dr. Dre comes up. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Okay. They didn't show us. Okay, pause, pause, pause. So Snoop Dogg, Tupac, Eminem, Dr. Dre, LL Cool J, Notorious Big, 50 Cent, Jay-Z. By far the most popular rappers ever. It's not even close. LL Cool J was rap's first what about Ice Cube? superstar. Be Ice Cube would be somebody. Ice Cube would be somebody I put on the list. I, I, honestly, there's a case for Ice Cube over Dre or Jay. Yeah. Uh, uh, not Jay, but not Jay, Dre. over Dre. Maybe Dre. Yeah, I think a lot of people know Dre as a producer. Yeah. In Beats by Dre? Yeah. You know what, what I mean? What about Andre 3000? Nah. No. And I love Three Stacks. Love he, him. He's, I think got, he's got the a, biggest song out of anybody on the list. Outcast. That's the biggest song. Definitely. Outcast, hey, y'all, it's definitely one of there's the biggest a, songs. There's a Drake case here. Yeah, Drake has sure. been the biggest artist for the last two decades. Drake's not more popular than nobody on that list. Oh, cool, Jay. No. Yes. Bro, I can tell you one thing that keeps LL Cool J... Probably more famous than Drake. CSI. 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 Yeah. <laughs> like 70 year old white men, uh, white women are like, oh shit, that's LL Cool J because mm. of CSI. Mm. That shit comes on CBS and is broadcasted to 20 million, 30 million people a week and has been for years. Or Ice T, right? Maybe Ice T, yes. It's a different, I'm just saying, like, it's just certain things that make you popular around the world. 
Hmm. And I think LL is up there. You know, go watch my uh, interview uh, with LL Cool J. We got a little, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah I got a little the, series I'm going to start putting out. Oh, it's out already. It's called Out of Context. I got another one dropping next week. With whom? I don't want to say. Why? Yeah, you know. What do you mean? I just like, I just like to hit them, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but maybe we get them all excited. Yeah. Could you oh, give wait. us a hint? No. Damn, bro. No, wait. <laughs> He's not on that list. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> He's not on that list. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Oh, Hello Kitty Girl. Speaking of two things I found out this week. Hello Kitty, Kitty is not so a cat. Hell? You're so stupid. It's called Hello Kitty. Let's listen. Hello Kitty is not a cat. She's so trans, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Rainbow's done taking over Hello Kitty, too. And SpongeBob is autistic. Yeah. That I could SpongeBob see. SpongeBob SquarePants is autistic. I can see that. Let's hear what Hello Kitty was again. She identifies so as So Hello Kitty is not a cat. She's actually a little girl. Born and raised in the suburbs of London. She has mom and dad and a twin <laughs> sister, Mimi, who's also her best friend. She enjoys baking cookies and making new friends. <laughs> But she got whiskers. Your cinnamon <laughs> roll looks kind of like you. She's kind of the tiny little girl, right? That's what, yeah, they, she, that's what we, they, they're playing with us, right? Like, we knew she was a girl. She's just a girl cat. Don't tell us she's a girl. It's like we know Bluey is a girl. You letting the rainbows get in your head. <laughs> Don't let the rainbows use their phony logic to get in your head. Are she a cat that identifies as a girl? That's what I'm saying. Like, she's using this, like, there's nothing is real logic that the rainbows use sometimes. So she's trying to rainbow into your head, and you're getting upset and believing it. Well, the if second... I was a cat that could walk yeah. on two feet, yeah. talk, yeah. use my hands, you know what I'm saying, ate, went to work, I would identify as a human, too. Okay. And well, you would identify that cat as a human. If you if if you had a cat that could walk in here on two feet, all right. Let me give you a better one. Okay. If there's someone who uh, got no use of their legs, right? Do they identify as a seal or a walrus? Uh, no, they identify <laughs> as a carrot. That's why we call them vegetables. So. <laughs> I said they can use their arms, though. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I didn't hear that part. I didn't start you. I didn't hear that part. I hate it. Yeah, you can't let the second they start talking and, and you just go, okay, that's awesome. That's great that you live that life. That's beautiful. That's awesome. So you disrespectful. just in one ear out the other. Yeah, you can't. No, that's so disrespectful. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants is autistic. Man, get out of here with everybody's <laughs> autistic. I'm tired of what this you fucking mean, shit. What man? Let people be autistic if they uh, want to be autistic. Yo, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Look at this bitch in the back. Throwing up a gang. This size. is hilarious. What the fuck? What set she uh, repping? Really identify with Sue SpongeBob. Wu? And because SpongeBob's kind of on a spectrum too as a character. And uh, this last con that I did in South Texas in McAllen, Texas, it was the first time I'd ever been asked this question. A person who was, you know, obviously on the spectrum uh, came up to me and said, hey, I have a question for you, Tom Kenny. Is SpongeBob autistic? Wow. Is SpongeBob himself right, autistic? Right. As and I said, yes, of course. I said, of course he is. And I said, I said, you know what? That's his superpower. The same way it's your superpower. Absolutely. You know, the same way it's Jenna's superpower. Oh my God. Okay, let's talk about Tom Kenny. Why well, we got a Tom Kenny? For every... Panda, 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 panda. It did not matter who Tom Kenny walked. Whoever walked up to Tom Kenny, whatever they was on, Tom Kenny was gonna be on. Exactly. Is it true? SpongeBob is gay. Yeah, yeah man, he's SpongeBob gay. SpongeBob is gay, just like you're gay. That's your superpower. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Absorbing up all that fucking nut. MAGA. MAGA. And this is gooey again. Listen, For real. Whatever, whatever that person came up to me, like, isn't SpongeBob Mexican? Man, yes. Of course he's Mexican. They do the cleaning. <laughs> Oh my God! Yo, there's a better one. Tell me, 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 tell me. Oh, absolutely. He'd be like, yo, SpongeBob. Isn't SpongeBob Mexican? Of course he's Mexican. And got no difference between his hips and... Wait, what is it again? <laughs> 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 he's, he's a rectangle. Of <laughs> Still like a shoebox. You gotta be Mexican. <laughs> Salute to all our Mexicans out Yo, there. Y'all know how to get down. Viva okay. la raza, wey! <laughs> Viva la raza! <laughs> no dejen que los rainbows te convierten. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Give us one more. And let's pay another bill. Uh, I don't have what does that say? You should do official flagrant. What was that for? Oh, oh I forgot about him. Let me go pee. I'll come back. We talk I about, about No, we, we go pee. We come back. We talk about uh, talk about Elliot Wilson. Let me go pee oh. real quick. Mm -hmm.
Okay, let's stop and pay some bills. Uh, thank you to Built. Okay, um, listen, man, we've all been there feeling like we're burning cash with those rent checks. It's frustrating, right? But here's the deal. Built Rewards has figured out a way to make rent more rewarding. Say goodbye to the money bonfire and hello to a renter's revolution with Built. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Even if you're still rocking the old school rent check vibes, Built Rewards has got your back. They'll mail the check for you. It's like having a personal rent paying assistant. Every month, pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation. Put your points toward a flight or hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. Use your points to sweat it out. Redeem your points to book fitness studio classes. You can also use your points toward a future rent payment or toward a future down payment on a home. Pay rent hassle free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Built points have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the points guy and bank rate earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash idiots that's join b-i-l-t.com slash idiots make sure to use our url so they know we sent you joinbuilt.com slash idiots to start earning points with your rent payments today all right guys let's take a break for a second because i gotta make sure your cocks are tough okay the best like way to have a stiff prick a one that a woman deserves Think about everything women go through in summer, wearing a sundress around Manhattan, walking over subway grates, dress fl you know, flying up in the air. There's some homeless guy whacking off in a corner, sitting on a Pepsi can. It's insanity in these streets, just like every single city in the entire country and also the world. And you know what these girls deserve when they're walking around, they're dealing with all that nonsense, their fresh pedicure gets stepped on by a skateboarder. They deserve the best dick you've ever given them in your entire life. And how are you going to deliver that? It's with the chew. Blue chew, same active ingredient since I Viagra Sayas. But this is the chew. This is the one that we blow the backs out with. And you're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS, and you have the best dick of your entire life to deliver to whomever you want, okay? Whomever is willing is most important, but also that you want. I love you. I hope you love them. Bluechew.com, promo code IDIOTS. Let's get back to the show. All right, Big Ellie. Uh, last week on Brilliant Idiots Podcast, shows you weren't here. Yeah, what happened? Uh, I was talking about the top 25, uh, the top 25 hip power, hip hop rankings. Let me see it, Taylor. I don't forgot what, what were the fuck this shit is about. But the top 25 power hip hop rankings. Okay. Uh, I got the number five. It was Elliot Wilson. I said, I don't think he deserves to be number five. Whoa. How did he react? He to that? didn't take too kindly to that. What's some of the tweets he posted, uh, Taylor? Mm -hmm. I know the first tweet he posted, he said, sucker shit at wow. Cedar God. Why? Another tweet, he said, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you at Cedar God. Fuck you. Okay. And then that's all I saw. Another one, he said, fuck you again. He said, fuck you again. So then what? Go to his page, Taylor. Uh, <laughs> I was said, about to bring up a. Who is number one? Oh, this is, okay, this is complex. Elliot, uh, uh, Academics was number one. As he should be. For this year? Of course. Uh, Elliot Wilson fires back at Charlemagne the God for downplaying his spot on complex hip-hop media rankings. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Why are you saying it? Scroll, scroll. Make it bigger, Taylor. Pause. Let me see what he said. Okay. It's not loading. All right. This is when he, he he's, co he's cosplaying as a, a, a rapper from the 90s right here. When he... Play what I played. Play, what did I say? Press play. He, this is what he posted on his Instagram. Hmm. Taylor. Elliot. I don't think you should be number five. Number four. Charlemagne <laughs> the God. All right, now let me read this. Right, last year's ranking number three. He's on the breakfast club. Really, it is known for sensational. You only get half a ball. Fuck y'all niggas. He segment. said, and so he re he reposted that, and he put sucker shit at Cedar God. Yeah. And then he posted this. What was this one, Taylor? What did this one say? I think Jace, that's what I mean when I say, why, why, why are you upset that people are transcending hip hop? I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to be the 50 year old person still complaining about not being on lists, beefing with screamers, doing goofy shit, you know, starting shit, you know, online with rappers just to keep my name relevant. No, I want to do things and put my. That wasn't a sub, by the way. I was just being generic. I was just casting a, 
a wide, wide net. Yeah, but you know he what I'm interpreted saying? as <laughs> he reposted that and put "fuck you." Fuck you. Fuck Why does you. he have such energy towards Fuck you, you? see the God. Then he said, uh, a Hall of Fame career, third Mike nigga, crying about my top five status, legacy these nuts. I got great content on the way. Hashtag 2024. Keep that tweet there. Goat. He said 2024. Yeah, goat. goat. Keep that tweet there. Go to what he said on my guy's Bag Fuel podcast. Salute to Heineken and Esso. Because, you know, he had to go to Bag Fuel podcast because he don't have a podcast of his own that anybody cares about. So <laughs> let's go listen. Let's go listen to what he said on Bag Fuel. Never now, really click like that. And OK, what was the question? I know Esso asked him, what's up with Charlemagne? Let me hear what he said. I feel like we just never really clicked like that. And also, I just didn't like the last little brilliant idiot shit he did talking crazy about me being on the list. Top five and shit. Never explaining why I shouldn't be top five. What's, what's this t-shirt it's like it's like it's the old school it's like at a certain point you just gotta say fuck this person like fuck you fuck like you. i'm born 1971 like it can just be that we don't have to be cool we don't got to pretend you clearly have an issue with me or you don't like my presence in the game like you said maybe you think i should stand down and be a legend Never i'm not that. here to get this like legendary badge with big boy or angie or sway like I, i'm here to compete right now i've never put you in that category in the year of 2024 <laughs> i know i'm a legend already like i still want to compete in great create create a uh, great content i was hot before you nigga i'll be hot forever like it's what it is like when you was getting wendy coffee nigga i was hot i would stay hot. Oh, i would stay hot nigga it's, it's what it is Okay, let's let's talk about it. Uh, the reason I didn't think Elliot should be number five on the list is simply because I haven't seen the work this year. Yeah, what did that, what that, did he do this year? He, he's been a troll. That's all he's done all uh, year long. Because I remember troll. when him and B Dot would do the podcast, and the podcast Rap was really good. Was good, you know what I mean. But all he's done this year is do a bad DJ Academics impersonation. Oh, and, that, and, that, and that's just the truth to the matter. And he knows okay. that. That's why in this tweet he says. I got great content on the way. Hashtag 2024. Why is it on the way? Why isn't it now? Yeah, tell me what you've done over the past year that warrants you be number God, five. God. Wallow and Gilly, constantly putting out fantastic content. Yeah. You know, and, and, and interviewing all of the young artists. All of the young artists, like I said last week, want to go to Wallow and Gilly. Wallow and Gilly be giving them that OG game. Nori with Drink Champs. Constantly giving you so, great hip hop content. Vlad TV, constantly giving you great hip hop content. I don't think that you should be over any of those guys. Number five? I don't think you should be over Gabe P. Like I said on the podcast last week, Gabe P is somebody who comes out with a show, you know, uh, on the radar that is a rap show. It's literally about the best, the, the people go up there and freestyle. So let me just that understand is as an outsider uh -huh. to this. Uh, can you be awarded a rap or hip hop media award if you don't have a platform? That's the other thing. You don't even have a consistent platform. My but brother. does he have a platform? I don't know. He does, but he don't use it. Rap Radar. Rap, rap Radar, Radar was. I thought that was really good. Like the that, last time you seen a Rap Radar interview. I remember the interview with uh, was it Jay Z where it was that no was five. That was nine years. I don't even. That was a long, long, long. So long they time stopped ago. doing Rap Radar. I haven't seen one in a long time. Great, okay. great brand. I know that they wanted uh, when they lost their. Well, they didn't lose their last deal. I think the company that they was with shut they, down. Shut down. Yeah. And then he wanted to come to Black Effect. Oh no. We didn't want it. Oh, so that's that, why he's. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's the reason why. You know what I'm saying? But we. Or we, it's more insult to injury when when you weren't interested and you also said he doesn't deserve a spot. Listen, man. Yeah. Well, they I, haven't, I, for what it's worth, they haven't. According to Apple, it hasn't released an episode since December 14th, 2023. Okay, so let me. And that might have been me. <laughs> that might have been the last episode. Uh, no, it was Gucci Man, and but I think it was you know Interval shut down towards the beginning of this year. So let me just oh, okay, understand okay, okay. this: is is your argument in order to get to be a figure in in hip hop media, you need a platform to disseminate your media? I think so. I mean, everybody else up there has one. Like anybody you look at in that top twenty five list, if you look academics at academics, has multiple. Academics platforms. has multiple platforms. Yeah. You have and, multiple. And, 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 and let's talk about that. Yeah. Right? People can say whatever they want about Ak, and I give them his props again. 
He consistently nah, works. Now he's involved. He's this involved. Act might be on screen right now. He's involved. Act might be on his ninth hour. He's like into me. <laughs> right now. Act might, we might, whatever time we're taping this, he might be on his ninth yeah. hour yeah. of a stream. And this might just be his first time jumping on the day. And he's intimately involved in most of the beefs that are happening. He's like releasing it's, music. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. He's yeah, got, yeah. He's daily he's on the screen. Incredible. He's got the off the on the record podcast. You, same thing with Joe. Joe realize Joe's like, putting out two podcasts a week. It's a full Nori's time. putting out a podcast yeah. a week. Yeah. Gillian Wallow putting out not just the podcast. They got yeah. the Gillian Wallow adventures. They're always putting out. Vlad is always putting nah, out content. Yeah, Gillian Wallow killing it. Also, Tra Vlad Trap Lord killed. Ross got documentaries. There's there's so many people you can put on this list. Even though I feel like the icons, like the big boys and the Angies and the Sway, shouldn't be on there just because they're iconic and they should be doing something else. Even they got daily platforms. Like we should have another list for them that puts them in their proper perspective of the Mount Rushmore's. Because it just feels strange to me. It's like, it's like right now, if, if you said who the top 10 players in the league, and let's just say Braun is at seven. Yeah. And I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying. Yeah. You'd be like, that don't look right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even though but, we're talking about right now, that don't look right. Yeah. Like, to me, I'm like, if we were doing the top five media personalities in basketball... I don't know if we put someone on that list that didn't have a platform to disseminate their media. It's really that simple. The fact that so you, I don't the, think that's the, a reason, uh, an unreasonable take. But then would your argument be that he shouldn't be on the list at all? Now, now I, I, I'm trying to think of this from both I, angles. I, I would, I would. Are uh, there? You know, how, like there's some people that like Twitter is their platform. I could put him at 25. Okay. Because Twitter trolling should not be enough. And by the way, me and Elliot had this conversation last year because one thing that people forget. Mm. He went on DJ Academics podcast last year because once again he don't have his own platform right. that he can utilize. Right. So he went on DJ Academics platform. Play what he said on Academics platform last year, Taylor. This was last last August. I'm not feeling Charlamagne right now though, too. Why? Yeah, but, yeah, I don't. I don't like how you move sometimes. Honestly. Wait, like personally or? I thought you guys were cool. Nah, You've been cool, up there. We're cool. We're cool. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 hold on. No, let me, let me get the, I, I mean, listen. I, uh, um, I, I wasn't feeling. I, think that I, he I, does, was, I don't think some type of OG moves he doesn't do right to me. I feel like he's like really how? much about his 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 people's his network and how he's moving now. And I think there's a change. You you sparked that and said that, and I think that that's true. No, to no that. of course. I think that's the. I think that's always been true with Charlemagne. Though. I, I feel no, like, but he's got more empowered, and the lines have kind of been drawn more about who is on his side and who's not. Yeah, if you're not black effect, like you're like out the bus. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, but but what's your history? Really, can what's I? You his can you pause for a second? I mean, it's all Pardon respect. me for promoting my company. No, no, no. <laughs> this is an this is an actually interesting thing. Talk to me because I know where that energy comes from. Talk to me. They see you promoting certain people, doing certain pods that are part of your network. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming, again, I'm not exactly sure how they feel. I can just uh, talk from like maybe my perspective with other things. You see somebody doing pods, right? And then it's hard for you to get them on your pod. And you're like, yo, do they not fuck with me? Like what the hell is going on? You don't realize that like you have four daughters. So that person has a whole life. Let's say you have eight hours a month total to go build podcasts. Wouldn't you build the ones that you're intimately invested in? Oh, absolutely. Not everything, and this is a hard thing because we all have fragile egos in this business. It's a hard thing to accept, but a lot of times when someone doesn't do something for you, it's not nefarious. They're not malicious. There's this thing called Hanlon's uh, 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 razor or something like that, where it's basically like when someone does something bad to you, don't chalk it up to malice. Chalk it up to... Uh, I'm going to fuck this up, man. Incompetence. Incompetence. That's why I always say blame it on my mind, on my schedule, not my heart. Ex exactly. But but this well, is this is a... Now, what I will say this, just again, from observing outside, I do think that beef is the lowest form of creativity, but it is often the thing that people go to when they need immediacy, when they need immediacy and they need a uh, reaction. Well, this was Elliot just using academics as dick as a scooter. Because, you know... <laughs> Like, 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 I always say dicks. I always say dicks are the worst form of transportation. Yes, right? this is when mine can only get you like four inches. Where you, this is when people thought me. Yo, and the acting. worst is when you make a little dick joke and it bombs, bro. Bomb. I wish I bombed with a big dick yeah, joke. Right? Let me try with it. It can only get you like eight inches or nine inches oh, or ten God. inches. This is when people thought me and Act had an issue. When me and Act never, me and Act have never had an issue. Yeah, why do regardless, people do regardless that? Regardless of what. 
I may say, or yeah. Act may say, me and Act do not have no issues at all. Me and I Act... Love, I love get, Act. Exactly. So this is him going on Act's podcast... Trying to rile shit up. And trying to get on Act's good side. You're supposed to be the OG, so why are you doing that, right? That's number that, that, That's number one. Why do you think he's doing this? I, he was just trying to be down. You're, trying to be, you're the old man in the club just trying to be down. It's like, why you got on the skinny jeans and the freaking... Oh, <laughs> you so you think he's like trying hard to <laughs> fit in. You got on the skinny jeans with an NBA jersey tucked into the skinny jeans. Yeah, yeah, showing off the belt. <laughs> you know what I'm showing off a belt. Look Louis belt. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's what he did right there. So that was just random. I hit him when this happened. I love that you go direct. Uh, come on, bro. Oh, Every I, single on, time on. you hey, listen, go direct. I don't know. I don't like talking behind people back. I don't know how, right? I'd rather talk to you. I'm going to get yeah. to that in a minute, too. So I called him. He didn't pick up. I said, yo, peace. This Charlemagne. Hit me when you get a break from embarrassing yourself with all the clout chasing you doing. <laughs> oh Look goodness. when this. When was this? <laughs> August 14th of last year, right? Mm -hmm. He texts me back and goes, you switched up, and I light tapped you. You hopping out like this just proves it. I said, how about give me a call? And then I go, how could I switch up on someone I never had a relationship with? Your words. This isn't hopping out. This is me calling you because you saying my name for attention. So now you got it. I understand if your insecurities want to allow you to pick up the phone, I'm here. Woof. Right? Mm. Woof. So then he, 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 did, he did FaceTime me or whatever. I don't know if it was FaceTime or call. I can't remember. Uh -huh. I can't remember, man, because, you know, he... <laughs> He looks so much like Ben Stiller's father, and I like Zoolander. So when I watched Zoolander, I don't know if I FaceTimed him or I was watching Zoolander that day. I really don't remember. So long story short, everything I'm about to say right now is what I told him on the phone. Yeah. You're embarrassing yourself. Yeah, yeah. You are Elliot Wilson. You was a respected journalist. You were the editor-in-chief of Double XL. Yeah. And I said to him, if you're going to play this new role, Elliot, Post this on your Instagram and tell the people I'm not lying. Yeah. If you're going to play this new role yeah. of being a cultural critic, provocateur, yeah. who has these heavy opinions about people, stand on them. Mm. Don't, don't pop shit and then apologize. Is that what you think is happening? Oh, my God. I, 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 how, how many times? How many times? How many do you want to see? Okay. Drake, please accept Elliot Wilson's apology. Elliot Wilson says Little Yachty forgave him for interview comments, but Drake, hum, Drake hasn't. Elliot Wilson apologized to Kai for not following Nicki Minaj's spat. You apologized this way. All I simply told Elliot was, when you say things, stand on it. This is the stream. So, this, go, go, go. So sorry. even with this right now, yeah. don't dish it. If you can't take, take it. it. Just a couple weeks ago, you were saying Childish Gambino, not hip hop. You said mm -hmm. what you said on your show, Bigger Picture. Yeah. I'm childish, but I'm not Gambino, right? Yeah, so yeah. if I give you, so if I give you some critique and say, hey, I don't think you should be number five, yeah. and now I'm telling you why, yeah. because I just don't see the work. All these other people that they put head work yeah. have put in way more work than you this yeah. year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is what you rely on now. You rely on saying somebody's name, hoping they respond, run into your Twitter with it, run into your Instagram with it, yeah. and you don't even have your own platform that you can go on. Yeah. You got to hope that Joe Budden invites you, or Bag Fuel invites you, yeah, or yeah. Academic invites you. That's a sad existence, my brother. I just think you, I just, I think that you're better than that. Yeah. And um, I, I don't aspire to be this when I'm 53 years old. And I, I, I don't think I don't think I don't he, think he would either. I don't think he does. Of course, of, of course, because he was he a doesn't. legit journalist. That, that's all I'm. It's saying. It's hard to be like when you're legitimate at something, respected for your craft. Transitioning to like the streamer culture, where you just say the wildest fucking thing and then apologize later, and hating on the streamers. Why? But that. But what? It, I mean, what you're describing doing is typical streamer culture. Say the crazy thing, get it clipped out, and then a few weeks later apologize. Like, oh, we reconciled, and like, no, it's like nothing matters. It, this is like the clout over everything commodity. That's right. Uh, it, it, it's. I see this happen all the time. They just say the wildest fucking shit. They throw it in a thumbnail, anything to get it up, and it's not even wild and funny. If you say wild and funny, we can go, oh, you're creating some art or wild and right. like create the art, that's make right. a sketch that's, that's right. funny. It's okay. We're totally okay with it. I mean, when Chappelle made the uh, sketches about Prince, they're hilarious. funny. It's hilarious. Hilarious. You might be still making jokes, but there's art around it. He just inserts himself stuff like the other day when Cardi B and Joe Budden got into it. Mm. He starts posting about, this is like me and Nicki Minaj. I didn't even know you and Nicki Minaj had a beef. <laughs> so, so what are you talking about? So it's just like, my point is, you're 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 a 53 year old OG journalist. 
That's why are you moving like these young Twitter troll streamers, especially when all you're going to do when you get pressed is apologize. So that's and, and, and then you go on, you, you going on, you, you, you talk, you, you just talk. And first of all, I'm scared to death. I want y'all to know that. I'm so I'm terrified. I really am. Because yeah. he said that he's going to press. He said he's pressing shit out here. I don't know what that means. I, I feel like that's like that he's he might run down on me. I don't want any problems. Please. Yeah. <laughs> please. I'm serious. I don't want to be attacked by Ben Stiller's dad. <laughs> <All right? laughs> you don't want to meet the fucker? <laughs> I don't oh, want to meet son. the fucker. Yo. OK, so that was my reasoning for, um, you know, saying I don't believe he, long story short, yeah. I don't feel like he should be in the top five because I just don't see where he's put the work in. The bigger picture hasn't even been out for 10 episodes. You know what I mean? Oh, and it is. He has a he has a show now called. It's, the it's him. It's DJ Head and it's Jeremy. And he, he what played it when you shout out DJ Head though, man. Hold up, and this is the thing. I don't like talking behind people back. Yeah. So he he posted posted what he put up. Go back to his uh, page, uh, Taylor. Posted what he put about brilliant idiots in a uh, Breakfast Club. Cause I extended the invite. I said Taylor. Invite him to Breakfast Club and Brilliant Idiots. I love you. Because I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I don't want to do what I'm doing right now. That's not my style. You That's want why, it. There's so many clips. I love confrontation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like having that conversation. If I'm going to say something about you, you know I have no problem saying it to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I may, I'm just going to. I might deliver it in a different manner yeah, than yeah. I may, may used to, but we still going to have that conversation. Yeah. Scroll up. Let me see the tweets. Because he, he, he worded these like very tough. Scroll down some more, Taylor. You know he posts so much. All he does is post other people's content, and and it's wild. Like it's 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 strange, but I guess this is what makes him number five, huh? Um, which one was it? Where is it? It's past all of this. Jesus Christ, he looked like a fogger for real. Uh, he did post me when I was on Jake Tapper show the other day. Um, is that it? Now scroll up some it. more. Google. Scroll ups. Well, long story short, I invited him on Breakfast Club. I did invite him on Brilliant Idiots. Right. He said no, thank you. Right. Oh wow. But then he posted it and put turn down Brilliant Idiots and turn down uh, Breakfast Club. Am I petty? No, you're scary. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know what you're afraid of. Like I'm not going to do nothing yeah. to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrified of you. Look this at is him. A, this is a safe space. It's a safe space. This what is am a safe space. What am I going to do to you? Yeah. Elliot can clearly beat me up. Like, yeah. it's a, like, come on. Like, yeah. I'm terrified. I wouldn't right. mess with him, bro. He's an OG, 53 years old. He pressing oh, shit out here. I don't need guys. I'm a little yeah. scared to death. But now you're dragging me into it. I'm scared okay, too. Okay, well, see, the only reason I dragged you into it, Schultz, somebody left a comment on his page, yeah. and somebody said to him, um, you should do flagrant. And he said, I accept it. I accept it. So I said, Taylor, hit him and invite him on flagrant. Flagrant's not even my show. It's not my Andrew show show. I didn't run it by Andrew. I just needed to ensure yeah. that he is indeed another vaginal option like I thought. Right? <laughs> so I said, Taylor, hit him. I got the text. Don't you tell there's no need to lie, unless you should be honest. So he texted, he, he put the post up like it was some tough guy shit, like, I'm not doing flagrant with you either. Taylor said, Yo, you want to come do flagrant? He happily accepted. Like, yeah, for sure, I'll come do it. What can I read? The, can I read the text, Taylor? I don't like to misquote people. I don't want to paraphrase. I, can I? Can I? Can I, can I, I read? The text? This is, people are so dumb. I just want to read. He the lives text. for this, guys. I, mean, I want to read the text. Why would you feed the beast? I want to read the text. Wait, okay. I just want to read the text real quick. I just want to read it. Okay. Uh. Okay. No worries. This is Taylor. One last request on my end. Would you like to be a guest on Flagrant? Yes. When do they tape? Oh, cool. They tape Wednesdays. Heads up. Charlemagne will be there too. Elliot says, no, thank you. Ha. I don't respect that. You can't go on other people's podcasts. I'll come to you. By the way, I know when you tape the bigger picture. I'll come to you. You can't get on yeah. platforms and call me a sucker and say, fuck you, you know? You know what I mean? Fuck you. And then when I want to sit, like, let's talk. You say yeah. you want to smoke. Yeah. And, it, and it's not that he's just saying he wants to smoke on social media. You texting people. Yeah. Tell Charlamagne I want all the smoke. I, I, let's talk. Why do you think he won't talk to I don't you? like to threat. Why are you threatening me? I'm scared. I'm too scary. Don't threaten me. I'm, I'm yeah. scary. I will call yeah. the police on you. Yeah, yeah, let's just have okay. a calm conversation. That's calm conversation. Also, like, is the big picture a big L reference? I love that. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. Huh. Maybe. 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 All I'm simply saying is, man, that's it. That's why I didn't feel like he should be in the top five. Um, I don't respect it because you're saying all this fuck you and sucker shit, but then you get 
three different invites and, and, and you don't, don't want to talk, Elliot, we're going to run into each other. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, a month from now, six months from now, a year from now. How do you predict that goes? That's going to be fine. I'm, but I'm, I, need, I just need you, I, I'm giving you the opportunity to say fuck me. I, 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 it's okay. You can stand in my face and say fuck me. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. only thing I'm going to ask in response, yeah, Elliot, this yeah. is the only thing I'm going to ask in response. I watched, I looked at, let me, let me pull it up. I don't, wanna miss, I don't like misquoting people. <laughs> I love it. I don't I love like misquoting people, okay? I don't like misquoting people. There was a great article that came out July 12, 2024. It was in the New York Times. Hmm. And it was my working relationship with Diddy in the music industry. And um, Elliot's wife talked about how she put Puffy on a, a, a magazine cover mm -hmm. and Puff didn't like the issue. So long story short, uh, Puffy allegedly threatened to kill her. Jesus Christ. July 12, 2024. I went through, look, I ain't seen no fuck you Diddy tweets, Elliot. I ain't seen no sucker shit Diddy tweets, Elliot. Oh so we got to stop the performative stuff is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't say the things to me just because you're trying to get traction yeah. on social media and yeah. play the role. I want you to be consistent. Yeah. The same way it's easy for you to get in a childish Gambino because you don't think a child is going to say anything back to you. Uh, the same way it's easy to get in a Charlemagne because you don't think a Charlemagne is going to say nothing back to you. I need you to keep that same energy for people that you really should have smoke with. Yeah. Because this happened in the 90s. You've been playing nice with Diddy all of this time. So don't do that with me. I don't have an issue with you. Yeah. I don't. I've never, I do not have an issue with Elliot Wilson. This whole funny style thing he's bringing up and saying I've, we've never really rocked with each other. That's cool too. Yeah. Like, you don't got to be friends with people. I feel and, like we've all bumped into each other and it's been more I've done than rap friends. radar so many times. I've seen Elliot out yeah. so many times. Like what would make you think I have a, a issue with you? Like what would make you think I have a, a problem? Yeah. Just because I gave my opinion. Yeah. You give your opinion. The same way you can give your opinion on your screamers. Yeah. Same way you can give your opinion on Childish Gambino. Yeah. Other people can give their opinion on you. Yeah. That is not sucker shit. Yeah. That is called being a cultural critic. And also sometimes there's some reflection. Like maybe you said something that actually hurt him and he's lashing out. But if you actually had a conversation, there could be something that was clarified. And listen, I hope that you come with all the work in 2024. Yeah. Because cause you, you proved my point. I don't, I don't see the work that you put in the last year. All I've seen you do is troll. But you've seen him before do actual I, journalism. Actual work. I've given him work. props. I've, I've said, yo, love the Jay-Z interview. I think maybe, that's one of the best Jay-Z interviews of all time. Maybe that's the disappointment when you see someone that has ability that's exactly what do the low-hanging fruit shit. You're like, why are you going you for that? You don't have that? to do that. I, I even yeah. gave Elliot solutions. I said, I think that you should be in the hip-hop documentary space. And I talked about, uh, oh. at the time, uh, I think it was Condé Nast. I, might, I think I might be mispronouncing that wrong. Condé Nast. Condé Nast. Yeah. And, you know, they got all the trade publications. And right now, what they're doing with all the trade publications is that a lot of editorials people have written, they're turning into documentaries. I know Fire. because I'm executive, I might be executive producing one of them. So, I was like, yo, you could do that from the hip-hop perspective. Like, you know who's going to be doing that in the future? Vlad. Because Vlad got all of that content. Vlad got so much different Shout IP. Vlad. Shout out to Vlad. He has so much different IP that he could use. You know how many documentaries come to Vlad now Bro. trying to license his stuff? So my whole thing with somebody like, Elliot, you're the hip-hop historian. You've been around that long. You did all of these things like the Double XL and Eagle Trip. Like, you could be into that space. Bro. Right now, what you, honestly, what he looks like right now, he just looks lost. I got another footage. Other footage of what? Elliot. You got footage of Elliot. Yeah. You want a piece? That's fucking Elliot, bro. You cannot you tell me you don't look like Ben Stiller's daddy. <laughs> Elliot Wilson looks like Ben Stiller's fucking father. Somebody do the side by side for me. Go get a picture of Jerry Stiller. Go get Zoolander, meet the Fockers, whatever you want. Put it side by side with Elliot and tell me he don't look like him. How do I look like out here beefing with Ben Stiller's dad? I don't even know if he's in Meet the Fockers. I'll be honest with you, I might be off on I that. don't know. <laughs> but I like the reference. Okay? Because Elliot is a Fokker. All right? I don't know what else he could be with a Fokker. Okay? Bro. Listen, Elliot, God bless you. Elliot, just just, just play nice. I, I, no, you don't, you, you don't even got to play nice. I'm just telling you, God bless you. 
I don't have an issue with you. You know how much time he has these days, bro? I, I just get <laughs> yeah, right. You just sitting at <laughs> volleyball tournaments, just cooking up ideas. You, you, this is that is, volleyball is cheerleading. Play, play, yeah, all give, that. give me another clip from uh SO and Heineken's podcast. I'm really just doing this because I like I like SO and Heineken. I watch SO and Heineken a lot. I've been watching them a while, lot lately. While you get up that cl uh, that clip, so I, gotta, I gotta shout out Vlad, man. Okay, talk to me. Um we just had like a great awesome. There was like a, a misinterpretation. And it was a perfect example of just like talking to each other and having a great convo and just like self reflection. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was awesome. And I really appreciate him for doing that. Like, yeah. I think he misinterpreted something and he just came to me. And then I was like, dude, that was so awesome that you came to me. I've always appreciated your content. I've always loved that you've had me on. And it was just great that you said that. And it was just, it to me, it just showed like one maturity. It also showed like confidence, like the confidence to be like, oh man, yeah. I saw that in a different way. Now I see it this way. And uh, yeah, so salute. That's salute what happened to me and Vlad. Vlad me and, I've been knowing Vlad for over 20 years, like literally. Yeah, yeah. Like Vlad was putting me on his mixtapes when I was doing radio in Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah. And we had a little issue because of, uh, and I said, I said something I didn't handle the right way. And you had the maturity to be like, hey, I could have handled that. A absolutely. Dude, it's absolutely. so much shit gets resolved once you become an adult and you can reflect on your own behavior. Man. Communication. Communication, bro. Vlad would have came. If me and Vlad oh. had this little kerfuffle, <laughs> Vlad would have came. Yeah. And by, by the way, I'll come to you. Yeah. I just need to talk. I need to look yeah. you in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. And I need you to say, fuck you. But it, fuck it, you. I need, to say, fuck yeah. you. I need you to look me in the eyes yeah, yeah. and say, fuck you. But it seems Tell like... Tell me you're sucking shit to my face. This, when yeah. you're sitting there drinking the tequila, I need you to do this to me. Press play, Taylor. From the era when they, I'm from the era where niggas didn't know what I look and like. And you only light skin nigga out, Thank bro. God. Exactly. So you stick out, you stick out like a sore thumb, bro. They, they go to light skin 53 year old legend nigga walking over there. He looks like a, a big sore thumb. Right he looks you like somebody's sore right. thumb. It's like That's yellow why and red. Mad at me too. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, I told him that. Ass. Cause my hey, shit Lenard, cool. Lenard, Lenard, you're bald, nigga. Ain't no dumb and tired just gonna save that, nigga. What? Your ball. That's Yo, been still dead. Your ball, nigga. Yo, bro, we got love for some Your dumb and can't save your ball this, nigga. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm bored. Yo, yo, you can buy a <laughs> <laughs> Buy a line of Yori. Yo, what is wrong with this dude? Bro. And zip that shit up, nigga. 100%. Dude is wild. Hold on, go back, go back. Why, he, why you gave Nori a shot? And then soon as Nori comes back at you, he gonna be crying. Press play, listen. Oh, yo, bro. Your ball, nigga. Yo, bro, we gonna love this stuff. Your dermatologist so can't save your ball this, nigga. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm bored. Yo, yo, you can buy a hairline like Nori. Buy a hairline like Nori. No, yo, what no, is wrong yeah, with this yeah, dude? No, zip that shit up, nigga. But all he wants to do is cry. He is, the, he is the person that can dish it but can't take it. And I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand. I, I've never played that game. Hmm. If I get on somebody's platform and I say some wild shit about somebody, or if I say something to somebody and they flip out, I take my L. Yeah. I eat them. Because you you put it out there in the world. That's what I'm saying. They can respond. You yeah. can't do that, bro. You can't not do that when you look like Ben Stiller's dad, okay? <laughs> you can't do that when you look like a beige sore thumb. And you can't do that when your name should actually be Eat a Dick Wilson. <laughs> eat a Dick Wilson. <laughs> He will eat a dick. You hear me? He will eat a dick fried. He will eat a dick sautéed. He will eat a dick boiled. Okay? He will eat a dick grilled. Shit, sometimes he'll eat a dick raw, fresh out the pack. All right? Okay? Motherfucker. I, I, yeah. Elliot, I, I, it's not going to be a back and forth. I'm, I'm, I don't have nothing else to say. Okay? You got it. You win. Just please don't press me when you see me in the street. I don't want no problems, please. Okay? Uh, as always, you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.